Hmm. Is the stream working? Let me turn this off for a second. Oh, it is streaming. And I'm glad I turned that off because I had it on the wrong screen. Okay. Display capture on. All right. Welcome. It's stream seven in my series of making my own keyboard. And I have a keyboard, but it's not done. It only has two keys. And uh, today's stream, I'm going to focus on trying to get it to include code that allows me to have it reprogram itself, given a new program sent to it over the USB. Uh, before I get to that, the preliminary work I did yesterday is a real mess here, and I need to clean it up. It's just really, really bad. So I need to restructure this entire delay MS thing. So it started out its life as a function we would call to have it just sit there and wait for 500 milliseconds so that we could regulate how fast we blink the LEDs. And that's the first thing that we did. So I think it's time that we restructure this so that what used to be just delaying is now the primary work of the keyboard. It's basically an event loop. We're polling a bunch of different things. And I think I'll just turn this around where instead of delay being the thing we do between blinking LEDs, it's now the primary thing, and then blinking because becomes one of the things that we're doing uh, inside the event loop. So I suppose... The best way to do this would be to move all this stuff that ended up being like stateful stuff and just moving it into an object and we just have an object that we run and that is the program. What do I want to call that? Like run comes to mind. I can't think of a better name though. I don't know. State is a bad name. It's just so generic. Um, I guess I could just call it event loop. Yeah, why not? Event loop dot rs. So if you haven't been watching my streams up until now, I'm doing all of the firmware on this microcontroller in Rust. The microcontroller is the RP2040 from Raspberry Pi. The board that it's on is uh, Adafruit KB2040, which is pin compatible with the Pro Micro, so it's sort of designed for a keyboard. And I'm not doing everything bare metal. Hey there, Lazy Guru! I'm using a hardware abstraction layer that the RPRS group made. It's a bunch of Rust developers that made uh, platform support for this particular microcontroller, which is based on the Cortex M architecture by ARM. So there's uh, also crates in Rust to do all of the really, really low-level stuff for Cortex-M, including like the bootloader, configuring RAM, configuring pins, and all that stuff. So I didn't have to worry about that very much. I got off to a pretty quick start. So we're going to define our event loop. And then we're going to have, this needs to be public, right? We're going to have an implementation of event loop, which has a public function called run, which can consume self. I don't need to borrow it or anything like that because it's not meant to exist. Actually, and we'll, we'll even say that this never returns. It's a special way to say we never return, right? And I think I'll just copy this stuff wholesale right now. I'll just take this, copy it into event loop, paste it. And from that, we'll determine like what the arguments need to be for run. And what we need to have in the event loop structure. And we'll also need a new function, right? To kind of set things up. 
because the main program does set some stuff up that we can't set up elsewhere or that I kind of want to stay in main. So this is going to be replaced by, how should I say it? Set up and run our main event loop. So event loop let event loop equal actually we don't even need to have a name for it we could just say event loop dot new dot run our main doesn't return anyway right right and then I can just delete all this stuff right event loop we will import uh, that needs to be a double colon uh, did I not make it public? I did make it public, oh but it doesn't compile okay, self empty for now all right, now I'm going to need a lot of imports, so I will just take the easy way out, copy all the existing imports from main into event loop, and then we'll just end up deleting the ones we don't need. Okay, some of these are actually our own stuff, so this will be crate level. We don't need to do that from the main, but we do need to do it from submodules, including this one. It's defined multiple times. Oh, do I have it using itself? Yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Okay, so timer, we need one of those. Where did timer go or come from? Wait, timer is something that has static scope because we boxed and leaked it in order to give it to something, right? I guess I can see where all the references are. We give it to the NeoPixel. Right, I give it to the logger. It has to be static for the logger, which is why we um, boxed and leaked it. So I suppose we would do the same thing in the new for our event loop, right? Like that. And we would just have timer here. And then timer becomes self timer. Cool. Okay. State. I need that. Yeah, that needs to be moved. Oh, as well as receiving program. Over to event loop for now. We're, we're doing this in um, stages of refactoring. Okay. New needs the timer. Back down to zero errors in main, but they're all in event loop. Okay. Okay, we need a delay. Delay, where are you? Oh. Can I just make my own? Is this ever used? I think I can just move this line in. Yeah, so that can just be moved in to here. Okay. USB device, HID serial, we need all that stuff.
I think we're just going to pass all of this to the new function, right? So does it really, does it matter what order I pass it in? Probably not. So we have the timer, we have the HID, we have the serial, we have the USB dev. Right? Okay. Yeah, I get the types of all these things. I'll just copy that. HID. And why doesn't it like USB bus? Oh, that has a lifetime on it? I don't see a lifetime on it. HID class that does? Oh, it's HID class that does. Okay. What's the lifetime for? For the endpoints? Actually, not sure. Is it sharing the lifetime of the bus? I'm not sure. <laughs> Do some of the easier ones first. Hopefully easier ones. Serial port was next, right? So serial port. Oh, is it the same problem? Yeah, okay, there's there's a lifetime. I'm not sure what the lifetime is on. USB device, what is that? USB device. USB dev. Can't find it in scope. Oh, it's because I never used it in main, never um, had that name directly in main. There we go. Fixed it. Oh, it has the same lifetime thing. It'd be nice to understand what that lifetime covers. I kind of see it with that. So it has to do with the lifetime of the bus object. They should have just named this bus, not A, and that would be more obvious. I wonder if I'm going to get into trouble, because this holds a reference to a bus. Oh, but it's an immutable reference, so yeah, I can just have it borrow the USB bus then. Right? Get the class of that. Actually, do I even need that? I might not even need that. I don't think I need that. I just need to declare a lifetime on it. Yeah. Okay, so there's some lifetime, and I'll just annotate it correctly here. USB bus. Okay. And that's, uh, what's it done? not like about that? Okay, it likes it, it just wasn't clear at first. Okay, and then I need to repeat that in the impl, right? Oh, I can include, indicate the anonymous lifetime. Oh, yeah, so we have to be explicit. Say it's all the same lifetime. 
Okay, all of that's resolved. So these all become like self dot. Oh, we don't have a watchdog. Oh, we need to pass the serial buffer reader also. Is that that's also in main. Uh these I can derive from the new, I think we can do that, right? Or no, I should just pass those in. Okay, I need that key scan delay cycles. This guy. Need that uh up here. Well, thank you, Lazy Guru, for making me feel that I'm not alone. Otherwise, there'd be no chat, and I'd be like, what's wrong? Self. Timer. Okay. Neopixel is a tough one, right? What's this guy? I wonder if I could keep this, some of those generics. Yeah, it'd be nice to be able to keep some of those generics. You, to keep the generics, I would have to do this stuff. Okay, I'm, I'm just thinking to myself that I, I feel like I'm on the slippery slope of moving everything into event loop new that was previously in main. And I'm wondering, if, is that really a bad idea? Maybe the new can do all this stuff. And then main really doesn't do anything. Except maybe heaping it, because that... We need that first, right? Yeah, I'm kind of feeling like... All this stuff should go in, and then really it's not really an event loop anymore. I, I need a, a more grand name, a name to represent the... Overall keyboard. What if I just call it keyboard? Yeah, why don't I keel call it keyboard? Beep beep. Yes. So that will have saved um a change here. Okay, this needs to be keyboard. Select all, what's that? Control shift L. Control shift L. Okay. Hmm. All right, so I'm yeah, I'm thinking I should actually move most of main into keyboard new. So let me do that. It simplifies a bunch of this stuff including um Well, actually it doesn't really so it doesn't it doesn't solve the problem of having to like specify types of some things like NeoPixel. It's got a complicated type, right? I'm going to still have to do either with traits or with the concrete type? Yeah, 
Yeah, but that's fine. Let's, it just feels more correct, so yeah, let's do that. It would be nice to have main be a small function, relatively, and to split the new from the run. Alright, so if that is removed from there, it's added into new here. Okay, and then this will really not need to pass anything now. I think. Because we're making everything we need instead of new. Hey there, sure shock. How are you doing? I'm on fire. I'm streaming every day. Well, I did update the schedule in the panel down there. Intention is to stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because on those other, on the other days it's either the weekend or I'm doing World of Warcraft raiding around this time. But I was able to stream yesterday because the World of Warcraft raid didn't happen. Okay, that resolved a lot of my errors. It still doesn't like Watchdog for some reason. Can't find Watchdog. Where did the Watchdog go? Did I delete him by accident? Oh, I think we got him, but I didn't hold on to him. Yeah, this guy, right? Watchdog. And then Watchdog. Okay, and then this can be self.watchdog. Okay, serial port reader. Here he was. Right, it's a ring buffer reader of a certain size. I'm, I can make that a constant and then reuse it in two places, right? Serial, what did I call it? Serial buffer reader or something? Yeah. Ah, I hit the wrong key and I did copy instead of paste. Ever done that where like you're going to hit paste and instead you accidentally hit copy? And then you have to go recopy what you had? Alright, let's make a constant. I forget what the type of this uh, ring buffer. It's a U size, okay. Mm, serial port ring buffer size 2048 okay so I can use that here and I can use it when we actually instantiate it, right there. Okay, and then we gotta hold on to it. So, where is it? Here it is. Okay, and then I need a self dot. Getting there. You see the columns and rows and the NeoPixel. Get the NeoPixel out of the way. This is going to be the big one, right? So, NeoPixel. Is this thing right here? So, it has this rather complicated type. We have to import a bunch of, of these types. This countdown one had a specific lifetime, right? Yeah. Consider using the bus lifetime? No, it's not the bus lifetime. Oh, 
<sighs> it is the lifetime of something here. Timer, I think. This countdown. Right, it... Oh, it's static, because the timer is static. Well, that's easy. There we go. And then we just put it in here. NeoPixel. All right, now I just need the column and rows. Okay. One's pin push pull for G PIO eight, and the other one's nine, I think. And row and ten or row zero was ten. So eight, nine, and ten. Column zero is that. Column one and row zero. That is a nine and that is a 10. Pin comes from our HAL. Uh, so does GPO eight and nine and 10 and push pull and output. All right, column zero, column one, row zero. Cool, so now we just need a bunch of self dot in front of these. Oh, one of them's not a push pull, it's um an input. Ah, oh, what's the type of this one? Input pull up. Not a push pull, it's a not an output push pull, it's an input pull up. Import that and in whoop. Import that. Cannot borrow self USB as mutable is not declared as mutable. Consider borrow can changing this. Oh, right. Um, run needs to be able to mutate self. There we go. Okay, getting rid of some warnings, right? Loop waste CPU cycles. Yeah, but that, that's not. This is intentional here. Do you use panic or add a call pausing or sleeping the thread to? I think we're just going to suppress the empty loop warning here. And this is unreachable. All right, and then. Um, Yet we don't have to mutate these anymore because they are being just moved into self, which is all, is with, all of which is mutable now. Same thing with NeoPixel. Okay, and then we have some unused imports. Dump, dump. And we're done with keyboard, right? Dump is actually not being used. Let me mark this as allow dead code because I'll probably want this for debugging later. Uh, that didn't work. I didn't copy it. Copy. Paste. There we go. <laughs> All right, and then main just probably has a ton of unused imports now, which is nice. We get to clean this up a bit. 
All this is unused. We're using keyboard. All this is unused. Not using that, using that, but not using this stuff. All right, cool. So the main program is actually really small that it fits in one screen. Look at that. So all the main is really doing is saying this is an embedded program with no real main function. In fact, I could probably, I, could, I should probably tr not call this main because it gets uh, confusing when we say no main. How about uh, that's not the button I wanted. How about entry? I could name it anything I want, right? So we're basically saying we're going to have an alloc error handler. We're using the alloc crate. Here are all of our modules. We're using entry to mark our entry point, and we're using our own keyboard type to create one and then run it. And then I chose to keep the heap in it outside because... That's sort of we, something we want to do regardless of if we're a keyboard or not. It has nothing to do with any specific pins, right? So let me make sure that keyboard new doesn't have anything generic also other than that. Um, this has to be in here because we're pulling pieces out. Same thing with SIO. Well, SIO is going to end up being used by the NeoPixel there. Here somewhere. I thought it was used here, but now I don't see it. Where is SIO used? Oh, it's used to access our IO pins, which is used he here and here, a bunch of places. Okay, this we could put in the main. Oh, no, I can't because it uses the pack and the watchdog. Right. Yeah, this stuff all sort of has to be here. Even the yeah, logger depends on the serial writer, which depends on... Actually, it only depends on ring buffer. I could m move this... Oh, it depends on the timer, though. If it didn't depend on timer, this could move into the entry point, too, right? But it does depend on timer, which depends on the pack, which we make here. Yeah, so we can't really separate any of that. I tried once, it didn't work. Let's, this one deserves a comment. So, collect to gather the resources. We need to uh, keep for the event loop. All right. So some of this could probably be put into new as well, right? But before that, let me restructure this. So what I really want this to do is, I want to move the NeoPixel stuff. Let's move the NeoPixel stuff into this this loop function. So how does this work? It does a start with a certain number of milliseconds and then when wait OK happens, it breaks out, right? So to restructure this to have the NeoPixel stuff going in here, I think, if I remember correctly, the start, if I can actually go to its implementation, the start here sets a period and then a next end, and then that next end gets advanced every time we um, return OK out of wait, right? So then we only really need to set that once. That becomes the interval, um, the blink interval, right? Or forever, whatever I use that uh, countdown for, right? I can have multiples of these countdowns, correct? Yeah. Since it borrows mutably, it just shares the lifetime of the timer. So I can have multiple timers. So let's make one called um, NeoPixel timer or something. If 
I have multiple, though, that means I'm going to be calling wait multiple times. But that, that's actually what I want, right? I want to have a whole bunch of timers and wait on all of them, because wait doesn't really wait. Wait just figures out if we've reached the time otherwise, and says yes, or it'll say no. It doesn't actually, so it's really a misnomer. It doesn't really wait. It's a non-blocking result. Okay, so then, if I'm only using delay right now for that, what if we just call this um, NeoPixel... Um, I hit the wrong key there. NeoPixel Blink Timer. And we might as well start it out here. And then this is going to be... Let's make this into a constant. Neo pixel blink interval. I just need to make sure the type is correct. I'm going to guess it that it is a time. It's going to be 500 milliseconds. I'm totally guessing here on the time. Uh, type, I mean. Okay, I, I'm wrong. <laughs> so, what is... Um, start except here? A time from the timer type. Okay. Maybe I just need to be unambiguous and call it timer... Is there anything else called time? There's nothing else called time. Why can't I just import time then? Time. It wants to replace it with a similar structure. I'm getting too dependent on that auto refill, auto fill thing anyway, right? Oh, it's something that goes into time. So what did I have before? It was, it was like five. Let interval equal five hundred. It was like five hundred dot milliseconds. Go to milliseconds. Okay, so there's literally a type called milliseconds. Okay. So then instead of um, time here, it's just milliseconds. Import duration milliseconds. Well, there we go. This is not a const function. How is that not a const function? Looking for into or from here. This must be it. Wait, what? Is it more complicated than I thought? Ooh. But yeah, it's not const for some reason. Well, I'll do the next best thing. I'll make this um, use size. I don't know what the type would be, but just say it's 500. And then I'll just bake the units into the name. Okay, and then, then I'll just call milliseconds on that.
what type do we think would work here? U32? Yeah, okay, it's interesting. U size doesn't work, but U32 does. Um, where am I? I'm lost. There we are. So, okay, get rid of that. I hate, I, hate, I hate how redundant it is, though. It'd be nice to move it over to the right side here, but it's that makes it non like it's not const. Anyway, the timer set up. So then inside of this OK, instead of breaking, then... Um, right, we're getting rid of this completely, right? What was in state, anyway? Oh, that's just... Okay, so that moves up here. Right, and then this just goes away. And then I don't need a let equal, because we're looping forever. This is the event loop here. Ah, uh, what's that doing there? Oh, right, it's, um, state in and out, right? So I don't need that anymore. Okay. So because we're alternating between on and off, I think what I'll just need to do is, like, have a state whether it's on or off. So neo pixel on equals false to begin with. And here's where we would um, alternate it. What's the type of the OK result for weight? It's nothing. So why don't I just be explicit and say it's nothing? All right, and then here's where we're saying neo pixel on equals not neo pixel well what if I do it this way if neo pixel on then we would turn it off else we would turn it on right so this is how we turn it on And this is we would how we would turn it off. Okay, we're getting rid of all this then. Um, I forget what this other way we're gonna do with that. Was I going to just It's, it was returned, but ignored, right? What do we want to do here? Panic? I had um, a panic somewhere inside of here. I guess I can just copy that. Here. Not really doing anything with that panic message right now. But we have, I have nothing better to do with it. Okay, get rid of that. Okay. Let's comment this. So set up a timer to regulate how uh, fast we blink the uh, NeoPixel. Okay, this is wrong completely now. This is... Um, Uh, this uh, this is the well, this is the main event loop. Okay, I think what I can do here is just begin by splitting these off into sub functions. So let's start with something easy. So how about the key scanning? All this. 
put into it a function called like scan key scan matrix function scan or scan keys uh that needs to borrow mutably from self okay so i have some things i need to move into self or i can move these off into another type so make make this into the a method of a of a subcomponent for now let's just move them into self so i need um scan count where art thou scan count here here thou art okay let's move that to the new here undo paste so scan count is zero need to define scan count they're use size right okay so that's just self dot scan count now. Okay, what's next? Just going from the top. I have some errors inside of here. What's this? Oh, probably because this is, um, yeah, I'll, that'll probably get resolved when I resolve these other things. Okay, so previous report is a key code's default. Which microcontroller am I using? I'm using this one. RP2040. It's the first microcontroller from Raspberry Pi. And the board it's on is uh, Adafruit KB2040, which is um, pin compatible with Pro Micro and Elite C. So it's sort of designed for keyboards. So previous report is a key codes. Yeah, I made a mess of my firmware yesterday and I'm sort of cleaning it up today. Key codes. I hope I got that type right. That's what it is. <laughs> Lowercase c. All right, moving on along. Uh, that's self dot then. Okay, next. We got scan count start. So that's a U64, it looks like. Scan counts. Let's just, um, because it uses the timer, I'll do that and then just put it in here. And then I just need to define it in the struct here. Okay, so if that's a U64, it makes sense that the other one also be a U64, right? Oh, no, that's just named badly. That actually is a counter, and this is like the the hardware counter start, um, when we started scanning. Yeah, I'll have to fix that name. Okay, moving along, this becomes self dot. There. Expect to use found U64, so probably this needs to be uh, U64 also. Okay, keyboard report. It's an optional something or other. <laughs> I 
as input report. What's the state of the embedded programming in Rust? You got hired for a small team that plans to switch your hardware from microcontroller from STN to ESP, thinking of rewriting in codebase in Rust? I think it is pretty good for some microcontrollers and pretty lousy for others. So I had a... Um, I had a link, but I'm just going to look it up again. So there's a curated list of resources. Awesome embedded Rust. But I'd start there. So in here, if you just scroll down, they list like all of the crates that they have, and you can just see if your particular controller is in there. So, for example, I'm using the RP2040, right? And so, um, I guess it's not in that list. I shouldn't just skip to the middle, should I? Here we go. So, like, under Raspberry Pi, they say, oh, there's a complete board support crate for it, right? So, let's see. I think STM32 is really popular, right? Yeah. So there's there's a ton of ST micro crates out there, um, but ESP32 I don't remember that one. And there's nothing that starts with E in the list. <laughs> Is that ESP32 an Espressif SOC? So it looks like if there's already a book on it, maybe there is stuff. Oh, there we go. ESP32C3. What I found was kind of dismal was support for the older Raspberry Pis. So, because I had a I have a Raspberry Pi Zero, and it's not too much bigger than this guy. And so I'm like, oh, I'm sure they have support for that. Nope, not at all. I had to do it all in bare metal. There's not a single crate that I could find that worked for the Raspberry Pi Zero in an embedded sense. They're all for Linux. They assume you're going to put Linux on your Raspberry Pi Zero and then be on top of that OS. <coughs> the community is healthier than STM. That's why they want to switch. STM has been around forever. I remember that from like 15 years ago. But yeah, this curated list is pretty awesome. And I would definitely recommend seeing if like something you're considering is on there before you jump in, because if it's not on that list, then you're probably going to have to figure things out from bare metal, which you can do, but it's sort of a drag unless you really like that, 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 that thing. Bare metal is pretty doable in general, though, if, um, if, not, if all else fails, because fundamentally the tools are based off of LLVM, and it actually uses the LL, LLVM linker as is. So that's why we have things like, you know, this linker script, which might look familiar because it's GNU, LLVM, you know, the same kind of linker script. And there are um, attributes you can decorate your um, Rust code with to say that basically don't assume that there's any operating system. And we're doing a little bit of that in my main with this no standard and no main. <coughs> New to the team, so you don't know much of the details. Well, I, I'm, I'm thrilled that you're looking into using Rust because I love Rust. So this is an optional what? It has to do with this push input, right? <coughs> As input report. Hold on. Um, this. We build that ourselves. Yeah. Where do I build that? Right down here, right? Yeah, it's this guy. Okay, so that's the type of keyboard report. So it'll start off with being none. Right, keyboard report option that. And then we need to initialize it to none to begin with. Just realized it's on the wrong line, but I'll fix that in a second. There we go. 
getting there, right? Because this becomes self dot. If I could type correctly. Okay. Where's... Okay, we need to delete these things that are interfering, right? Right, so that becomes self dot and self dot. Okay. Now we're down to host report and initial report, which is a bad name because it's ambiguous. Let's get host report first. Okay, it has to do with... Oh, it's a tuple. Okay, so I made it into a tuple of a array with a number of bytes. Oh, that's horrible. Why did I do that? <laughs> I think I was just getting tired when I wrote this. It ought to just be a vector, right? And it'll grow if needed. Actually, no, it's because we need to provide space for it initially. So, optimally, we would just leave it as an array. And then host report can just be, um... Well, actually, I should just split this, right? Yeah, why don't I just split this? So there's, like, host report... storage, and then host report... Bytes or something, some better name. <laughs> and that's used down in there. Yes, okay. Yeah, okay. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Host report storage U864 completely. Arbitrary. And then host re... I hate it when I hit the wrong keys. S host report length. View size. Alright, and then we're gonna put it in here. That becomes a zero, and this becomes a zero, and then we're done. Okay, so down here it's a... S host report length and it'll be if that is greater than zero then the report will be self dot storage up to length Uh, but don't I need to clear that afterwards? Let me undo a little bit to see what I had there. Oh! I originally had it... consume it there, right? Post report. Okay, let's find host report again oh I see it was an option wait I just replaced it where did I take it out I guess I never did so that was a bug uh, then we should just after reporting it we should just clear it Oh, I, we don't need to do this anymore, right? I, so I can simplify this. I can just take this out and put it at the... at the top of run. Actually, not even there. We can put it... I can put it way at the top, right? Um, let's just put it here. Whoops. And we're done with our experiment, right? Do I even need this? 
I don't need this anymore. Let's just dump it. There we go. Simple. Simple. Okay, now we're down to warnings. Scan keys. I never called it. Where was I doing that before? I don't know. I think we used to be doing this after checking the USB, I think. So here's the USB block. So it'd be like right after that, I think. I think that's what I did. We just first scan, we're alternating between the USB and the keyboard. So, um, so if I, if I extract the USB stuff into its own function, then this will be a lot easier to read, right? So let's do that. Okay, we don't need this host report anymore. Right, because this needs to go into self dot. Oh, right. So um, I don't want the data anymore here. I want this to go directly into self dot host report storage. Because this becomes self dot host report length equals bytes. Like that. Get rid of this data. There we go. Okay, I I need to also yeah make sure I don't have any of this other stuff. So we don't need an initial report. This is local to the event loop. So is the state. So is the received. So it's getting we're cleaning it up a, a bit by bit. Don't need this to be mutable anymore. See, I think I have to put that out there because the moment I put it there, like, I can't just say that is equal to that because it will have been moved by the time we get there, right? It lets me do that. Well, that's cool. I guess because it's a reference, right? It's a mutable reference. It's just smart enough to do that before it does that. Okay, then. <laughs> Even better. Okay, let me refactor out the USB polling stuff. Uh, wrong key. I just deleted it all. Poll USB. Whole USB mutable reference to self paste. All right. Oh, um, that's used by pole USB, so. Uh, well, let's look at the other errors. Okay, so is state. Ah, uh, here's where we start to refactor this mess. So, to be true to this, we would pass in both and receive both back out, right? So, um, received is an optional... Uh, what was it? <laughs> I already forget. Some vector news, right? It's an optional vector of bytes. Which was the beginning of the madness last night. And then the other one was the state, which is a state. And then we're passing this back out, right? So we're going to receive back out the same thing. The Okay. Yeah. This is going to look ugly for a moment, for a minute, but it's okay. Don't don't freak out. You'll be all right, chat. I'll be all right. <laughs> so, now that we're passing it in, it resolves all the names, but at the end we have to just um pass back out the um Actually, I'm not even going to I'm not even going to justify it with a comment. We'll just say received state. 
If anything, I want to say we will clean this up soon. <laughs> And then I'll even grace this with a um, trademark. <laughs> now what's the big error here? Oh, the mi if is missing an else. Because this needs to be moved out one level. All right, and then here's the ugly part where we have to say... Um, Receive and state equals pass in, pass out, right? And we're mutating both of them. It's one, I think, clever way of circumventing the borrow checker is you just don't borrow. So instead of borrowing them from the caller, what we're doing down here in, um, where is it? Here, we're not borrowing receipt and state, we're passing ownership in, and then we're getting back out the same types and we just store them back in because, and you can do this because the compiler for Rust recognizes that, yeah, you move these into this method, so they're moved out of, but hey, we're moving something back into it so it balances, which is kind of nifty. So we, they're not references anymore. They are like passed by, um, by move. They're passed, they're moved in. I think they end up, if it's not optimized, it would actually be copied on the stack from one stack to the other. But the, probably the optimizer is just going to optimize that away, right? I would hope. Anyway, these are pretty small, right? Vec is small. It just has a pointer to the allocated memory and the length. And the state, I think, is just an enum. The worst it could be is, um, yeah, 64 by bits, so it's not too bad. Anyway, so at this point, I've done enough changes that maybe I want to rebuild it and make sure I didn't break anything. So I want to put it in bootloader mode. Ba -da. Ba -da. And then flash. Ba -da. Okay, so it's blinking again. I thought the first blink was taking a long time, but I could have been imagining it. Cool, so um, my um, console is still working and still getting reports so I got rid of all the um, extra stuff we were doing now we're just getting the keyboard report is when I turn caps lock on on my other keyboard and off and then when I press the keys here we see the key um, key reports and then I left in the flash counter to begin with so that's good I didn't break anything so this is step one in refactoring we moved all of the keyboard into its own type and then I Extracted out functions for USB and key scanning. So let's just check that in right now. Commit that. Okay, so this is refactoring. So X um, move keyboard stuff. Basically everything except for the entry point and the he heap setup. Into its own object. Split. Should I just call it? Into, into its own... Um, keyboard object split between a new with the parentheses it's obvious it's a function right split between new which uh, does all the setup and uh, run 
which has the event loop. Okay, and the other thing I did was um, extract out methods for a US USB polling and key scanning. It's going to be hard for me to see the diffs because I moved everything out. It's uh, not even going to be possible, right? So maybe just I'll eyeball this to see what else did I might have changed here. So I left this pretty ugly that we're going to want to continue refactoring, but all of their variables are now in the object. Pole is large, the USB polling is largely the same. Oh, right. I, um, for host reports, I clean that up a little bit. So keep dedicated array for host to, um, for host report, USB host reports. And uh, track array usage in a separate variable. Okay, what else? What else did I change here? Oh, right. I incorporated the NeoPixel blinking as part of the event loop. So, incorporate a NeoPixel. Pixel uh, blinking into the main event loop rather than uh, having the event loop be part of the um, like the the way we were del delaying between blink intervals. Okay. I like that. Push it. All right, next step in refactoring. Main is clean, right? Right. Initialize heap first, then set up and run our main event loop. Nice and clean. The only thing we use is the entry and the keyboard. All right. Scan keys is okay. That's pretty straightforward for now, so I'm going to close that up. Okay, does the run look okay? We set up the new pixel. Here's our main event loop. We either, um, okay, I'd rather say be optimistic here by having the okay be first, the wood block be second, and the other be last, right? So this is saying that every time we um, poll for events, if uh, we're, we're kind of taking a look to see if it's time to blink, if it's, a time, if it's time to blink, then we invert the NeoPixel. If it's not time to blink yet, then we pull the USB and we scan the keys. I think what I'd like to do is have this be like idle. So let's refactor extract function and call it idle. Oh, it has this problem with in and out, doesn't it? Okay, then never mind. <laughs> I need to fix that first, that ugliness. And then I'll extract these two as idle. And for now, I'll just put a comment. Perform all polling when we're idle. Well, I can, let's turn this around. We are idle. So perform any polling. We need to... Any polling we need to do. Uh, do any polling we need. There. Uh, to do. <laughs> hey yo, soldiering Protoss, how are you doing? 
How long have I let your comment sit there unacknowledged? I'm sorry. I get... What it is is I'm focusing on my code, which is on that screen right there. And then my chat is way over there. See where I'm pointing. My chat is there. My, my code is there. So there's kind of a wide field of vision or wide, wide angle between uh, one and the other. So I, didn't, I don't quite catch people. 40 seconds. Okay. <laughs> I don't always catch when uh, chat appears. Working up through the book and hanging out. So the Rust book? or the embedded Rust book, or some other great book. I'm refactoring today because yesterday was a, a hot mess. Even though it works, it needs to be cleaned up before I continue any further. The regular Rust book? That's great. Um, should I do a little bit of shameless self-promotion? So if you were to go to a search engine and go to YouTube Raimu, there's also a link below, um, that's interesting. I guess I did mean Raimu, not Rhyme. <laughs> you go to Raimu's videos. I actually have a series on Intro to Rust um, playlist. How do I get a link to that? Copy link. I know that's an ugly link, but that should bring you to my playlist. Intro to Rust. So if if you're going through learning Rust and you like watching Raimu, you can do both now. <laughs> hey there, A squared. How are you doing? Yeah, I appreciate any feedback that you might have. Um, I tried to make that series geared towards people who might not even have a whole lot of programming background, so I started really basic. So feel free to skip the first few videos if they're too easy. Um, yeah, and if you see any errors i also want to know about those some people have caught some of them and i'll acknowledge it in the comments it's one of those things where they stay as errata until it's enough and then i might re-record something anyway uh moving on happy enough with the run so for now so i'm gonna collapse it let's look for the other things i might want to do okay i'm i'm okay with the new function because we do need to do a sequence of resource grabs and setup. So I'm going to collapse that for now. So yeah, our main source of ugliness is the USB polling right now, right? And it's mainly what we do when we receive data from the serial port. So that's interesting. Why did it not wrap these comments? Oh, I'll hit that button and it does it. Yay. Okay. I think to separate the good code from the bad code, let's just extract this method right now. Refactor, extract into function. Right. Um, does that just save as is? No, it's got a big effing error in it. What's wrong here? Wait, how did it, how did I put a star in front of that? I don't know. <laughs> it puts stars in front, in front of things for some reason. Oh, right. Um, okay, I, wanted, I need to do this without re the refactor step because it gets really confused by that. Yeah. It's because state is going in and then coming back out. Yeah, let's just manually extract this function. I want to call it like self dot. Um... Actually, hold on, not the whole thing. So undo only the inside of it. So this part here. So if we received some bytes from the serial port, then um, state equals self dot um, process serial input. Oh, 
I guess we can right here slice it. Right? And add state. Okay. Process serial input. Mute self and its report or input, which is a slice of whoops. Okay, before I live, lose my clipboard, I should paste there. <laughs> Manka S. Okay, yeah, this needed um, state, right? And it passes back out of state. Okay, so that was this input. Right, and then yeah, it get, it needs to receive data too. So it's this we're gonna need to do we're going to need to do this stuff temporarily until we fix it. Yeah, actually exactly that. Let me collapse that for a second. And we're putting it back in here, right? This isn't working quite the way. Oh, expected. Okay, the I just got the type wrong. Need the brackets. El bracketo. There. Okay, yeah, at the end of the while loop, we gotta return it. Okay. Still builds, right? Didn't break anything. We haven't done any horrible things yet. So hopefully now the poll USB looks readable. So service USB bus, if it has something to say, then first check for input. Check if we have something to write and output. And then we see if we um, have some HID report to send and some HID report to receive. Okay, I like that. That's good enough. Um, except for this business, but we'll soon fix that. Okay. Now we're down to this process serial input. It's not as ugly as it started out as at the beginning, but when, so we'll get there. So yeah, this receipt is like a buffer. Actually, now that we have a self, we can we can stash it there, right? And it doesn't need to be an option either. Yeah, so I'm going to hopefully make a big improvement here by moving received out to state. I'll fix these names later too. And just it's not doesn't even need to be an option. It's it's a vector, right? And then um we need to initialize it in our new function. Received. Okay. Okay, so then um, we no longer pass it in. It's part of self now. So this gets removed and then this gets simplified back to state. So then this is just state, get rid of received. And then this is just state. Here, we're, we're already cleaning it up. Soon is now. Okay, so then um, this is self.received. Everywhere where there's received, we put self.received.
And we're just about to get rid of the Azraf unwrap too. It's quite a few of these. And then this becomes state. Okay. Okay, the red lines mark where we need to do some work. Right, so this just goes away. Take, unwrap, into iter, skip. Oh, right. Um, this is how we um, remove part of it. And we don't, we, we don't need this info anymore. So really, what I want to do is, do is just move the contents of the vector around. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punt on that for a moment and fix the other places. Right, there was this. We don't need this anymore. We still iterate to find the next new line. Okay, so then I don't need that or that or okay, we're punting on that for now, right? Don't need this. Oh, same thing. Um, maybe what I do for now is push this into a function. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So make a function called like um consume received or something mutable reference to self and then bytes is um u32 i think or u size yeah paste that So this won't compile yet, but we'll make that compile in a moment. So this is just self dot consume receive bytes plus one. Delete that. This one is self, whoops. Self dot consume received um, new bytes. How are we doing on time? 9.30? Been going for an hour and a half. What does extend from slice to? It takes a vector and then um, onto the end of the vector it, it, um, it appends a copy of what was in the slice. As it says here, it clones and appends all elements in a slice to the vector. So it, Makes the vector a little bit longer, and then just copies one element at a time. Kind of like this. You start with a vector with a one in front, and then you extend from this slice. Now you have all of them in it. And these are not the originals, they're copies. So it only works with something you can copy. Probably it's specified deep inside here, right? Ah, uh, that's a trait, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, at some point... It copies the things. It's kind of hard to, to look through the standard library and make sense of it sometimes. All right. Um, okay. So this Azref unwrap, we don't need anymore. Cool. Okay. So replace with a new vec is just a clear, right? And then this goes away. Okay, this is again self dot consume received new bytes uh, as you size. Get rid of that. Okay, I have a comp oh right. So now I have to figure out how do we take what's off of the front. So we need to move. Basically, I need to move the elements from the end to the front and then truncate it, right? So why don't I just do that with a four i in zero to um, self dot report. 
recede, I mean, dot length um, minus bytes self dot recede i equals self dot recede i plus bytes and at the end we do self dot recede dot truncate or set size set length oh there is a truncate the new length will be um actually this so we should just stash this right let new length equal that put new length here and there done you've never seen code like default function so that when you're looking on extend slice Oh, I haven't either. Let me go back and look at that. Oh, this stuff? I'm not sure what that means, actually, because I was going to say if it maybe it's for in a trait to provide a default implementation, but no, that's not the case. What is default function? Because this is um, a concrete type, right? Or no, it's a it's a it's not a concrete type. It's a um, generic specialization, a very cursed feature. Okay, so I shouldn't learn more about it because it's cursed. I'll wait until I need to know about it. But how, when will I need to know? How will I know that I need to know? Got an error out here somewhere, so let me find where it is. Here, right, because it's just state equal. And then remove the recede. And then I don't need this anymore. Hey, look at that. Notice how there's multiple impl for a vec? You won't need to know about it for several years. It's still fundamentally unsound and can't be stable. And yet it's in the standard library. <laughs> that What you mean, I bet, is that in general it's fundamentally unsound but they were very careful i'm sure they including you right eight squared you guys were very careful when you used it in the standard library to only use it for good and not evil for order and not chaos <laughs> specialization over lifetimes is very bad see i'm not even aware of what definition of specialization we're talking about and maybe I would become cursed if, if I were to know so all right I still need to whittle down this process serial input right Do I need to do it this way? Isn't that just, um, like, slicing? I forget, what happens if you slice a string beyond the end? So let's say I have something like let x equal 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I say let y equal the slice of x 10 or something. Does that panic or does it just give me 1 through 4? 
does it panic? So that's what, so take doesn't panic, right? It explicitly says in there that it yields until n elements are yielded or the end of the iterator is reached, whichever happens first. So if that panics, then like what I really want would be something like the minimum of that and x dot len, right? So that's the safer version of it, and that's what I would use here. But is that easier to read than that? Maybe. So... Let's, let's try it. Size bytes dot extend from slice slice oops slice self dot recede it's not auto typing for me <laughs> um recede um basically this but instead of ten I want new bytes Instead of X, I want self-recede. And then I want a semicolon at the end. And this is the old code. So, you be the judge. What looks nicer? That or that? Can I extend iter take I guess that would be a third option would be which would be somewhere in the middle of this right right you're saying instead of assembling a slice I just keep the iteration and do an extend to get, eliminate the push right so that's somewhere in the middle of these two extremes I thought maybe this would be faster because it might be optimized to say okay here's a slice Put it at the end of the vector, and maybe instead of one push per byte, it would do a single resize of the vector for how many it knows it needs, and then just plop with one mem copy. Take is easier to read if you have access to take doc. That's true. So here's the al the alternate would be what a squared said, where we do extend instead of making a slice, we put in the original iterator. I think that is the easiest. I think I think a squared gets a point, don't you think? I think a squared gets a point. Oh, it's points. There we go, 165. And extend, extend from slice, and certain generators can be extremely well optimized. Okay, I'll take your word for it. So this is somewhat more readable now. Kind of, you can kind of start to see what I'm doing. I'm saying that well this this name needs to be improved but we're taking four minus the number of bytes we already have so we're trying to get up to four bytes right and when we're taking them and putting them into size bytes and then taking them out of received and then if we have four bytes then we can interpret that as a u32 right and then we can see um, how far we are into the received and that becomes their offset like count the number that we received and then just clear them out and then we print out how many bytes so this can actually this is more relevant to log right there um this is just acknowledging this this is this substitute this is uh we'll remove this when we actually do the real flash programming right because we're saying we have already received that many bytes now we need to receive the rest of them right and then um we're into the new state where we're receiving a program because we now have the size. What happens when size bytes is 10 bytes? It can't be because it starts at zero. I guess we panic, right? So we start at zero, an empty vector. And we only ever extend up to four minus what we have. So it can never be bigger than three here. We, we will never reach this point. I guess I could put in a cert, but I, I might as well just let this panic, right? Let panic if it's greater than four.
hopefully when I, once I'm done refactoring, it'll um, that question will be sort of obvious or won't need to be asked. Okay, so new bytes is what we've received and the program minus the current offset. So just consume it, advance the offset. If we reach the end of the program, programming is complete. Fix that comment. So that's, this is actually coming together, I think. I don't think we need this anymore. I think I want to clean up this state thingy. I don't think I want that anymore. That ligature? Where did I have that? Over here? Yeah, I don't know why it does... It puts... It elevates the dots up for some reason. I don't know what that ligature... I don't think it was intended for rust. I think it was intended for something else. I think these comments are self-explanatory now that I've refactored it enough. The thing about this state thing is that it has different um, working variables depending on what state we're in. So we do need to change the variant of it quite often, so I can't just have it in self, right? Or can I? Can I move it out and then reassign it back in? I guess I can try. So if I were to try, then um, what would be the first step here? Go to this level and uh, actually up to this level and just remove the state equal. Okay, and then, yeah, take this one and push it into self. Um, here. Not there, here. I'll keep the unfortunate name right now. <laughs> called state. State, state. We'll fix the names later. Okay. I'm not using string anymore? I think it lies. It must be lying. All right, poll USB doesn't take a state and it doesn't return one. It's just mutating self. Okay, and then the same thing for this process serial input. So that doesn't do that or that. Right, so instead, don't I have to borrow this mutably? I think this is the problem, that if I borrow it, I can't... Um, assign back into it to change its variant. Let's see how far I, this leads me. So like, here I can't do this, right? Because it'll say I'm borrowing it. Oh, let me do that. Okay, then. <laughs> so, then I don't need this. You could get the borrowed value with state at variant, and... It's erroring much earlier. Uh, that's probably why. Yeah, you're right. Um... I've never tried that state at variant thing. 
But you see where I'm getting at, right? I might want to change the state inside of uh, arm match arm where where we um we got there by looking at what the state was before. Anyway, yeah. Binding a pattern makes binding hold the value that was matched by pattern with that scope. You mean... Hold on. I don't quite understand that. If pattern is that, you think I can say state at? If I can type it correctly. And then I can do that. I can actually do that? Oh, whoa. I can. That's wild. Okay. <laughs> if this works, I swear. More points coming your way. <laughs> this needs to do the same thing. Okay, I'm venturing into the unknown for me of Rust. I didn't know I could do that. So then that's state equals. Actually here, um, I just need to change the, what's inside there. So do I, do I need to repeat all that then? Um, actually, yeah, either way, I got to change it. We can just do this in steps, right? So it's accepting that. Um, same thing here, right? A lot of times Mike gets sad with holding references to the struct versus the field. You can do mute and assign to that. Yeah, okay, that's what I'll try next. Uh... The problem here is this. Yeah, then we can finally do away with that thing. Okay, the elephant in the room is this, which is... Oh, I can just delete that. Hey, we cleaned it up. Look at that. Oh, now we have errors. Cannot move out of a mutable reference. Move occurs because these don't implement copy. It's moved on 317. Yeah, it's saying I'm moving out of self state, I guess. Right? Should I mute ref? <sighs> mute ref. I've never done this before. Nope. What does that do? I'm not too familiar with that, but I believe, like that's what A squared said, it's if it ma if the match is that, then whatever we matched, we we get to use that as a variable. Are you saying that I need to put the mute ref here? Because that doesn't work. Mute ref size bytes. Oh oh, I see. Yeah, see, you can tell I'm just guessing at the syntax at this point. You're saying that this should be that. Nope, it doesn't like that syntax. Oh, it's ref mute. <laughs> it says the order is backwards. Okay, we're getting somewhere. It doesn't like my try into because it's... um not a slice, right? Don't I, I need to slice it then, right? No? Okay, it doesn't want a slice. It was an array. There we go. It's happy now. <laughs> oh. 
Oh, that's a problem. I'm moving out, right? Cannot move out. Oh, but we already have a reference, so I don't. I just don't need to do this anymore, right? And I do. I need to do this anymore, or is that the? Cannot borrow self more than immediately more than once. Okay, here's where we're running into real problems, right? It has a mutable borrow here, and then another mutable borrow there. That's a problem. Yeah, so, okay. Gotta think of a better way to manage this state machine. I guess I can just go back to having state get pushed around. But really only doing it at this level. I can keep it out of the polling one, right? At this level, I can move it out and back in, I think. I can't remember if I ran into a problem with that. What does cargo say? Nightly clippy release. I didn't think it would need to check everything. Borrow of moved value. Value borrowed here after move. Move occurred into state here. Move occurs because state has a type reference, mutable reference to the state, which does not implement copy trait. Cannot move out of a mutable reference. Data moved here. Oh, that needs a ref. Is that it? That might have been it, except for this step. Oh, but we don't need to do that. No, back to having errors again. But fewer errors. You'd remove the state since you don't need it. Oh, I thought in, in one arm of the logic I was assigning to it. Yeah, I need it there. Because we actually are going from the normal state to the receive, but but here, what about here? No, I'm assigning it a completely new um, size and offset. Yeah, I'm going from this state to this state here. I can't get rid of the state at because we're have, we have to assign to it. This one I can remove though. Um, except for that problem. Yeah, it's, we're borrowing mutable twice. Yep, sad face. Okay. <laughs> so maybe I, this is just telling me it's, I'm going the, I'm going against the grain. So what would be a better way to do this? Move it out of self. I really do like the idea, though, of having this um, enum with um, variables that only make sense during these states. I really like that. I think I want to go back to that pattern where I, I extract it out of that state and then I put it back when I'm done. Least bad way, yeah. Uh, I guess we're just undoing that until we get back to that. Well, I mean, it was worth a try. I don't want to go all the way back, though. I think I can keep some of the things I did. Can I do that? Can I move out of self and move it back in? Yeah, I can at least do that. Now it's contained within this loop. 
Um, get rid of that. Oh, here's where I would do want to um, match it to the pattern, right? Oh no, can't move out of self state zero, which is behind a mutable reference. Move occurs because we don't have copy. It's moved in a bunch of places. I thought maybe it would be okay to move out if we if we move it back in when we're done. Can I do a a, a borrow? Yeah, but um, am I allowed to assign it back in when we're done? Okay, maybe if and else have incompatible types. Oh right, I don't. I have to um, do that. And that, maybe this will work. No. Cannot move out of shared references. That reference move occurs because these variables have types that don't implement copy. It's moved on 322. Oh, right, but we're going to fix this one, right? Um, that can't be mutable anymore. Okay, do I need the state there? Yeah, see, the problem is if I want to do this stuff where I update the state. Can't do this. What if um, state had the methods in it, though? Can I, I wonder if I could do it then. Yeah, can't I, can I make, can I make, take advantage of the tricks you can do with self? So, in other words, I can do a um, self dot state dot um what's the traditional verb it's like advance or something advance self dot recede and i guess process is what we would return it from that mm, give mutable access to that Self dot state and process equal that. Disjoint borrow. It's advanced topics at A squared. <laughs> Let's see what I can do with this. It the theory is that state can have its it, I can push the implementation into state, right? And that can have a function this uh, so move that over to there this is just advance so it's self and then received is a mutable reference to a vector of um, u8 and it returns a self Sorry, it's not a mutable reference. It's a mutable self. This the trick where it it transforms itself, processes of bool, and then I just move the body in there, right? So th this let's see what this does. I'm kind of curious to see if I can do this all the way down to there. X that out. Go to there and paste. I got a bunch of errors. Right, so then um let state or new state. Having trouble with the keyboard again, match state or match self. And at the end, it's just um, new state. 
and process. And I have to have a let mute process. Process equals true. So, yeah, the self gets removed from a seed. Okay, it's just state. Oh, okay, I'll have to handle that in a, later. <laughs> I think I need to move that to be like a method of a new type or, or something that I wrap the received around in. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be an issue, but we can we can work around that. Oh, also it needs access to the watchdog. I hope it just needs to have immutable access to it. Nope, mutable access. Okay, so yeah, the consumed received is an issue. Uh, it's sort of ugly, isn't it? Okay, are we down to the one issue? Is this consume received then? Copy. Find paste. Why can't, why don't I just make that a free function? Why do I, why does that need to be in, in that impl? I can just put it here, right? Uh, I can put it anywhere. I'll rename it in a little bit. So instead of self, it's just, um, Just that. Get rid of the self and dot in front of it. It's actually, it can be generic while I'm at it, right? Okay, and then um, this gets turned around, right? It's received. Well, it's just received. Um, in here, because it's a free function. Yeah, that works. This much goes there and there cannot move out of index is it because this has to be copy yeah. Cannot borrow size bytes as mutable, is not declared as mutable. Now it is declared as mutable. If I can type correctly. All right. Oh. Cannot move a cell states behind a mutable reference. Oh. Uh, 
We can't do it. Well, that shut me down. <laughs> Can advance take a mute self? No, the whole idea is that it chain it transforms itself potentially into a new a new state. Let me think about this. I mean, how bad would it be if I implemented a copy? It would be pretty bad, actually. You think so? That's what I was thinking, too. I had to put it in an option. Yeah, I was thinking that I would um, bite the bullet and um, implement it implement a copy and in the implementation of copy it would clone the vector yeah it would be ugly <laughs> it does not do it um can you even implement copy you can't right it's something's either copy or it's not right i can't remember yeah okay you're, i was right <laughs> i just couldn't remember if i was right um Well, shoot. We almost did it. What was this thing? Oh, it doesn't need to be mutable because, yeah, it just consumes itself. And we never did use string. But it's that one point here that makes it not work at all. Can I do something like let state equal um self state or is it going to say you can't do these tricks Yeah, I mean, I just really expanded. It's going to be the same error, right? Hey. Yeah, that's the problem, right? So I could pass the buck and have self come in and out. And that would work, right? Hold on. If I did this... If I did this... And mutate self... Now I've just passed the buck, right? See, now the air is not there, now the air is up here. So I could, again, pass the buck. And make this mutable. And at the end, do self. And that passes the buck even more, right? Except for what's going on here. Borrow, move, self. Value, move... Borrowed here after move, move on 335. Oh. We can't, I can't do that, can I? I can? Whoa, okay, next level stuff, okay. <laughs> 
Right, because of, um... Actually, it'll just tell me, right, where it got moved. 404, here. Yeah, there we go. I did it, A squared. With with move trickery. Look at that. Self equals self pull out USB. Self comes in and out. Then uh where was the next step again? I'm getting I'm getting lost. Here, process area input. It just self in, self out. Right? And then this one, um, because we're consuming self and then producing ourself again, we can do this trick where we move out of we move out of part of ourself and then assign it back. <laughs> Not sure if this is better than just having state go in and out. I mean, it just looks a little weird to have these self equals. Like, does that actually compile away to like not actual, not an actual move, or is that actually moving the entire self around? You're doing the same thing, but this time with extra package data. So yeah, I'm actually moving everything. But would that would it optimize a way to actually not move it, or um, am I just hiding a really bad thing here? I guess I'm hiding a really bad thing, right? It really is copying the entire thing around. Do I care? I probably care. Okay, undo this. How far do I, back do I want to undo, though? Seems worse? Yeah, I mean, it's sort of goofy. Oh, yeah, keep going back. No, 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 hold on. This is what I want. I want this. Where is the error? Yeah, or back to this fundamental error that I can't, that I'm, but we're, that we're just borrowing the keyboard to process the serial input and it's, and it's moving the state around. Okay, so hold, so maybe the where I make the break is here where I just do an option. Or would it be better to put it on the heap? Box in, box out, so it doesn't really move. You know what I mean? It's, it stays on the heap and just the ownership moves around. Splitting state out into a function argument would be ideal. Which function argument? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I can do this. Do I even need an option at that point? Let's put the option in to begin with. I, I'm pretty sure I know how to handle this one. Uh, sum. Actually, the option just seems extreme. Ext well, we'll leave it. Yeah, sum. It has to temporarily be a none. Okay. As ref unwrap and then new state. Self dot state equals some new state. I just need to fix uh, this advance. So hold on. I need to take it 
I need to have it operate. No, this is this is always gonna isn't this always gonna result in a copy of some kind? So um, this is just meaningless. State is small if the box is likely a perf penalty. Yeah, I think splitting the state of the yeah. Okay, never mind. I'll get this eventually. Maybe before midnight. Maybe after midnight. Is it just? Is it enough to put it in an option then? I wonder why string keeps getting included. I think I know why. Uh, anyway. No box this time. This is just ugly that I, I hate having to do that because status itself in enum. Ugh. So I did, I did need this. No, it's take, isn't it? And then replace, right? So it gets copied around. There, that compiles. Got a question. You've been wanting to write your own Rust firmware for 2.4 megahertz Wi-Fi module, though I don't know how to dump the original firmware. You mean how to, like, get a backup of the original firmware? It's all going to depend on the Wi-Fi module, so... Nothing to do with Rust, right? And every every module is different. Um, you know, what I what I would do is try to find the data sheet for the Wi-Fi module and see does the data sheet mention how to access the firmware, um, what kind of debug interfaces it has. If can you connect a JTAG probe to it? That would be the ultimate way to dump the original firmware. Is if you can if you there are JTAG test points you can either connect to a, if it's got a, ideally it would have a, conne a JTAG connector. If it doesn't, maybe there's some test points or some pins that have a JTAG interface, and then you can get one of those, um, forget the, the companies that make them, but um, they're pretty standard now. You just have to look up how to use them, what they are. I haven't done it in years, but you'd use the JTAG to basically read the, the flash memory holding the firmware, and you'd store it in a file, and that same JTAG can be used to program the flash to burn it with something else or restore the original image. But yeah, those are the things to look for if you want to dump firmware or replace it is does it have does there a data sheet for it and it, uh, is there a, a either JTAG or other programming interface for it? Like you need ultimately you need to access the storage like the flash or the EEPROM or whatever's holding the firmware and you'll need to both read and write it. <laughs> but hey, A squared, I think I, um, I think I fooled Rust <laughs> into building this thing with minimal um, crud. Uh, yeah, let's see if it actually works with my trickery in place. Ba -da. Flash. Ba -da. Yeah, it looks like it, it's working. It didn't die. We're still in business. So the trickery I did that I'm not quite sure I like is that this state is an option which lets me take out the um, take the state out and then run it through um, something that consumes its, it, it that transforms it basically. I don't think advance is the right name. Maybe um, next or something would be better. In, my, in your opinion, the option is more crust than a stale argument in and out of that function? A state argument. Which function are we talking about? We're talking about the process? How, I guess I'm not understanding how, what you mean by uh, making it into an argument. An argument of which function? Advance? Oh, this one. But this is mutating self, and it's being stored in self. Unless you're saying take it out of the keyboard completely. 
Is that what you're saying? Okay, if I follow that logic, assuming that's what you meant, I'd have to pull it out of pull USB. Which means I'd have to pull it out of um, the run completely. Is that so? You're saying you liked it the way I originally had, where I, you know, all, all, at this level I had state equals pull USB state, and then all the way down from here, and state was just something that we set up here, I guess, and then it's mutable, and then it just updates as the loop goes. Where does run access it? It's in pull USB, because pull USB calls process serial input, and that's the one that advances the state, right? I mean, maybe it looks cleaner. So basically, don't couple it with state, but completely remove it from the keyboard state, and we're just passing it into things that need it. And my okay, let's try this. So that would be that. In in, in addition to taking self, it takes a state and returns a state. Okay, and then we would be able to do the same thing here. State equals uh, first or second it's first this would need to be mutable and at the end we got a return state okay and then in this one it's a similar thing mute state and then it returns a state. Then we don't need to do um, this. I can just say state, right? And I don't need self dot, and I don't need the take and unwrap, and I don't need the replace. I just need to say state at the end. And this because it needs we need to actually define it so let state equals state normal mutable yeah that works and then I can drop the original state that I had which means I don't need it here so that works too I think most of the original crust was a lack of advance on state yeah Let's rename that. That's a really poor name. Really, it should be next. So you're taking one state and finding the next state. And the way we advance the state is we give it new, newly received data and access to the watchdog. Next state, perhaps? Well, the, the state part is sort of implied by the type, right? I think. Or do you think it would be not repetitive? State, next state? I don't know. It's better than it was a, a minute ago. <laughs> I don't like this process flag. This should be like more, um, really it, this next should loop if anything, right? Um, no, it's okay. That's okay. We could remove the process flag, and just as I said it, it just looks ugly. So to remove it would mean pushing this while loop into next, and... I guess I could do it, but it... Okay, the reason I think I want to leave it the way it is, because this is small enough, and if I push the while loop into the next, it makes next even more ugly, and I still want to, to uh, fix this. Actually, I'm thinking already the best way to fix this is each state should have its own function. <laughs> Loop can be internal. The process is a bad word. Um, 
I just noticed something. Um, why is there a process there? Oh. I know why. I know why. Still move the loop inside next and return the flag for each function. I see what you mean. I mean, it is the next refactoring step because it's what kind of stands out as sort of weird. Is this, is, this is weird enough, right? Actually, I can fix this, can't I? Because the state is in both places. Why didn't it like that? What's the difference? <laughs> Oh, because that's a different state. Okay, never mind. Yeah, machines are ugly. Actually, I think this would be easier to read if I just did this. And get rid of that. Now it's explicit that we're still in the normal state. Right? Yeah. It's actually consistent with the other ones. Okay. <laughs> I think I might need to take a break and get something get something to drink. Let me take a break for a little bit, just for a few minutes. I need to stand up and stretch. It's hard it's hard to explain so you send a Discord message to some basic structure what you're thinking. Okay. Um let me take a break and stand up. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I was pacing around a little bit and I think I might have an idea about how to get rid of this process flag and this... If I, um... I, it occurred to me that I'm always setting process to false if I don't consume something. Right? Here I consumed... Wait a second. Consume something but still say false?
That's actually wrong, isn't it? It or it's unnecessary. We don't need that. Yeah. Okay. So what if um I kill two birds with one stone here and um this actually gets done by the caller and what we what we return is we return the number of bytes we actually consumed and we let the caller both loop again and after updating received. So this would be um Hold on, I don't even need to return anything. We can the caller could just write down No, it doesn't even need to write it down. We just return the number of bytes we consumed. There we go. So, um, this would be, um... Where would I write this down? I could just make it easy on myself and say consumed equals zero. Yeah, let's just do that. So, consumed... I'm gonna get rid of that nice ligature in a second. A squared. Plus one. Because that goes to that. Oh no, it doesn't look as pretty. So actually, this is consumed. Take the consumed bytes. Get rid of that. This is also consumed. Get rid of that. This gets kind of turned around a little bit. It's going to be this as U size. And then it would be consumed. Okay, and then the caller, it's um I think we can just loop. That's I think that will read easier. Right? And then we can say um let consumed. And then Consume, recede. I can move that back into state, actually. What's this one saying? Oh, it's unreachable. Um, yeah. If consumed equals zero it's it's more explicit that we're that we're gonna we break out early if we have no more data to process actually i only call it in one place right can i just put it there Like this. You know, the other thing we can then do is rather than doing this every time, we can, um, Pass in a slice to state state run, and then 
we just update our slice and then and then when we break out is where we really want to just hold on to the leftovers right what font is this this is fira code uh i don't know what happened to the font command we can add a command add com font uh Fira code. Let's give people links. That's always nice, right? Yeah. Is this the best place to link people to? Isn't there a better one? This one might look nicer. Eh, I don't know if I like that one. Um, is this the ultimate source of it? This GitHub? Kind of looks like it is, so let's... There. Say it, bot. Fear code. It would be a drain, but that's a little weird. Receipt drain removes range from receipt. Does it? Drain. It's sort of like, I don't want the removed elements, I just... And I don't want to drop the remaining, I want to keep the remaining. It's like an inverse drain. <laughs> truncate truncates from the end, but I want to truncate from the beginning. What I really, really want is a truncate beginning. See, I want to keep the last len characters and drop the rest. There's no truncate end in vector, otherwise that's what I would use. But I think I do want to improve this now. Now that I know that um, this can take a slice, right? It doesn't really need... It doesn't need to mutate this vector anymore, right? In fact, let's test that by making it not take mutable access anymore. Yeah, it's still... Wait, it doesn't? Oh, we do a clear here. Okay, but instead of a clear, we could say that... Um, Uh, consumed plus equals received len. Right? Yeah, so then I've just proven we don't need mutable access to that, which means I could just pass a slice. Works just as well, right? Now that it's a slice, this becomes significantly easier, right? We can say let, um, like, input mute, let's make it mutable, is self dot recede all of it. Or there's an easier way, right? You just do as slice. Right, and then this just gets input. And then instead of doing this stuff um, there, we would move it out to here and change it a bit. Here we would just say input equals slice input consumed dot dot. Okay, then when we get out to here, it's going to be the new length is the received length minus the input length. And how come I can't do that? Immutable. What? 
Oh, yeah, we need to um, get rid of it. So we need to say um, consumed equals that. Because we, we, we have to drop the input borrow first. There, that should work. There, I like that because we don't actually muck, move things around in the vector until... Uh, and then I can even comment this. So, um, drop the bytes consumed, but uh, keep any leftovers. So this is... Um, Combine new input uh, with previous leftovers. And this is um, process input until um, nothing more is consumed. Cool. I thought it said drain drops the remaining elements. Maybe I just misread it. That is what I want though, right? So you're saying I could do a drain and then just ignore the output? Would that be faster? Consumed equals input lane is wrong? Oh, you're right. <laughs> um, it should be just this here. Actually, it's these are... Well, okay, yeah, this is wrong. Um, this is the new length. Consumed is this. A squared helping me out as usual. I forgot to give you points before, so um, I think you've deserved at least three points. Need to accumulate consumed. Yeah, so the new length is whatever we have left. What we consumed is what we originally had minus what we have what we have left, and then we're um, just moving over what was um, to the, the to the beginning from what was um, we skipped what was consumed and we grabbed the first one and we move move it to the first position. I think that's correct. Let me reread it again. New length is kind of a bad word. So it says remainder. Um, leftover bytes. I guess bytes is superfluous. Leftover is what we have still in the slice. And so what the number we consumed is what we started what we what we started with minus how, how many are left over, right? And then for every every byte that's left over, we grab it from starting at consumed and move it left. And then we truncate it with what we have left over. Yeah, that looks right to me. So you're saying I could use drain instead, though. Maybe that's what I want to do, just to make it easier to understand. S removes the... Sp yeah. So it would... So instead of all this, it would just be self.recede.drain input length. I guess that would be zero to input length. Cannot borrow or see this mule because also, oh, because of this. I 
I just don't like the fact that we're a it ha that it has a return value then we're dr we're just ignoring it. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, right? Removing the first end. Okay, fine. <laughs> I don't know why originally I thought that drain was not was not the correct method. But that does read better. See, I, I always know that I'm getting towards the right answer in Rust when it becomes shorter and easier to read. <laughs> Can I finally rename this thing? This is more, a more complete name to, would be serial input state. I don't know if I like normal. I like long names. Should it be input lane here? Did I screw that up again? I think I did screw it up. Okay, I did screw it up. So let me compute it. So leftovers, right? Or it's really consumed. Yeah, I did screw it up. <laughs> Another point. Hey there, Cthulhu. How are you doing? Cthulhu, we're awarding points left and right to A squared as normal. Look, 169. So yeah, this is self.recede.len minus this so a squared is just saving me from painful c keyboard breakages later on I don't need a zero there do I so drain all the consumed data out consumed is the difference between what we started with and what we ended with it makes sense to me Make sure it still works. I didn't hose it. Ba -da. Looks like it's still running. Look up look at this Katoo, I got a two keyboard a two key keyboard. See that? If I'm actually um in a a console window, that's Q. And that's W. <laughs> Can reset the board. Oh, that's right. Um, sometimes still when I reset the board, it takes it a while to actually connect. Yeah, I'm working today on uh, cleaning up the mess I made yesterday, and then, if I have time, actually do the real Flash programming. Um, I want this board to be self-updatable. So the idea is that um, I can send the program through the serial port, and this process serial input takes it, right? So. As we receive bytes from the host, we're storing it in a vector, and then um, we try to we push it through a state machine basically until all until it it stops, and then however many bytes the state machine accepted, we take out of the buffer, and in the state machine we're in one of three states. We start in the normal state, 
And um, if in the buffer it has the string program with a carriage return line feed, then we're going into the next state, which is receiving the program size. Receiving the program size, we're holding on to a buffer hold to, that'll hold this, the 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 size and bytes of the program. And we need there are four bytes, thirty-two bit. So we're um, extending the that vector until we get four bytes. And when we do, we interpret the bytes and we print it out. And then we go into the next state, which is that we're receiving the program. And there, we have another buffer where um, we're um, it's actually a more complicated buffer. This thing where we know the size of the program and we know how far we've, we're, we're in to receiving the program. And um, I'll add this when we're actually really programming things. This will hold on to what we've received so far for the current flash sector, right? So as we're receiving parts of the program, um, we're going to be writing them to flash using a flash programming subroutine. And then when we've reach the end programming is complete and then we would have to do a second stage where we overwrite our own program with the new program and then do this little dance which causes a reset actually it's all three lines here turning on the watchdog and then not feeding the watchdog until we reboot <laughs> yeah right now we're not really programming you have enough keys to make it boots bootstrappable all you need is two keys to input the flash memory <laughs> Like one zero 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 one 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 zero zero one one, yeah, and do that a uh, hundred thousand times until you've input the entire sequence. Oh, I forgot to charge my watch. I should just plug it in now. Hold on a sec. I've been forgetting to plug in my f watch lately until. The watch starts to complain that it's almost out of batteries, at, at, and it's usually at the end of the day, and I'm like, oh, no, don't, don't die. I should verify that the programming sequence works. So the way this works is from this program, if I run it with that, it should go through the programming sequence. <gasps> it crashed. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, so I did break something. Well, well. All that refactoring, and somewhere along the way, I broke it. Welp! Uh. Yeah, exactly. So is it back to the kind of debugging I was doing yesterday, I guess? which was basically inspecting the state machine and making sure um, um checking for errors here yeah when i when it panics there's not much i can do because um even using the neopixel requires that i make it static oh it crashed again Requires that I make the NeoPixel static so that the panic handler has access to it, and that's even uh, that's a hard thing to do. Wow, it's crashing uh, immediately. <laughs> On reset. So it's like when it's receiving anything, right? Let me um, kill that uh, programmer. Beep beep. Beep beep is right. Wait, how do I kind of didn't kill it? Beep beep. Uh, there it goes. Took a while. What if I just change the programmer so it doesn't actually write the program out? Like, um, just comment out this stuff. Here. Oh no, just sending the word program alone caused it to crash. But, uh... Okay, what about just sending a um, new line? Or how about have it sending, yeah, just send a new line, would that cause it to crash? Mm, 
yeah, I gotta wait for it. It takes some, up to a minute for it to, um, for the serial port to start working, and I'm, it's something in Windows, because I tested this on my MacBook last night, and it was reliably six, seven seconds every time. On Windows, it's either zero seconds or up to 60. Uh, I'm not going to waste time while I'm waiting for that. I will look for errors here. So if we're in the normal state, and we find a position where the new line is, then we know how many bytes we're going to consume. If it matches that string, we're going to go into another state. Otherwise, we're just going to stay in the normal state. <laughs> and consumed gets released along with the new state. I mean, if we didn't update the slice, we would get into an infinite loop here, right? Okay, so it doesn't crash right now. Yeah, it doesn't crash if we just send a uh, carriage return line feed. So what if I send like carriage return line feed P R O G R A? Yeah, so we're fine with that. So it's w when I add an M here. Uh, oops, turn that off. If I add an M here, it's going to cause it to crash, right? Yep, that did it. Okay, well that narrows it down. It's when it hits this line, these lines here where it crashes. So thinking about it, it goes into this, it, it, that's the new state, right? So that'll get signed to, to new state. And then um, it should drop those bytes. It should go back in. And this will be exactly zero. Actually, um, the receipt will be zero too, right? Oh, that's what it is. Uh, if we run out of bytes, it will keep trying, but it will never consume any more. This is wrong. Um, it's not four. This has to be a minimum of input dot len and that, right? Because we might not have enough. Uh, is it received? Let's rename that. That should just be input. Is this freestanding Rust? This is Rust running in the microcontroller here. How are you doing, Strager? I am using, if I could type correctly, RP2040 microcontroller from Raspberry Pi on the Adafruit KB2040, which is pin compatible with Pro Micro and Elite C. So kind of designed for keyboards like the Korn or the Pinchy that I found out is uh, another keyboard people have made where the firmware is all in Rust. Was the term Rust without the standard library? Um, yeah. Some people would call it bare metal, but I wouldn't call it bare metal because we are based off of libraries, but you use the no standard crate wide attribute, which says you're not using the operating system at all. Um, we're, we're just relying on what comes in the core library with Rust. Uh, although I am pulling in some crates like the allocator, so we have to have an allocator error handler. So it's not, it's not, uh, it's not without libraries. Oh, I see what happened. Strager raided me. How many people did you help today, Strager? Did you work on anything fun? So I'm seven streams into making this keyboard, and I have two keys. Look, I have a Q, and I have a W. <laughs> it also acts as a serial port. So as I'm typing here, um, 
the keyboard is reporting back over the USB serial port interface what keys I have held down. Today I'm working on trying to get uh, my host program to send a program to the embedded firmware and have the embedded firmware reprogram itself, basically. So now I understand why there's so many things in chat all of a sudden, because we got raided and I didn't see that raid message. <laughs> Stripped down rust. I guess that's, I, I like to say embedded rust. So whenever you have, um, I'm in the wrong program. Whenever you have the no standard, just think embedded. It's embedded in something. No operating system. Is there a usable fixed size buffer? Yeah, I have uh, 200 and, well, there's a little bit more than what I have here because technically you can go up to 264K, but I copied this from somewhere and I was too lazy to update it. You have very little RAM, but I get to decide what is done with that RAM. So right now I'm using 64 kilobytes for, as a heap. And I'm going to actually actually have to reserve a little bit more for holding on to flash sectors before I program them. But um, we got a lot of ROM. We've got two, two whole megabytes. <laughs> Linker script. So when you are linking a program that needs to load at a particular virtual address like say the virtual address that coincides with where it actually is uh, mappable by the microprocessor then you run a linker script and the linker script says well i'm going to take all symbols that start with or match some of these patterns and put them in certain sections that are mapped to certain regions of virtual memory so you really only need it when you're making a program that is going to be loaded into um into a system where you have you don't have any um, kernel so you like if it is the kernel or if um, it's a micro kernel you know something that's running on bare metal then you'll have a linker script to, to place things where they need to go because um, like if I have any global variables they're gonna need to be in the data segment and the data segment is mapped to RAM and not flash that's very important Array back vectors, there's several crates to do that. Yeah. I, I don't know all the crates that are available. Here are the crates that I'm using. This has got the um, board support package for this board. And I'm also using directly some of the facilities for the microprocessor, which is an ARM Cortex-M. And there's some general traits defined by the embedded HAL trait, uh, crate. Um, I'm using this for my heap, the linked list allocator. Uh, other things. There are some generic traits and drivers for USB devices. This one's for the NeoPixel that you see blinking in purple. It's a smart LED. Um, and interesting little twist, this microprocessor, the ARM Thumb V6M, does not have a fully implemented set of atomics in the core of Rust. So I'm pulling a, a crate that polyfills some of the missing functionality for that. Switching to Rust was a breath of fresh air that kept programming. Yeah, for me, it's it's kept things fun and challenging, too. After 50 years, C++ added modules. I know, they added that. They're adding that now, right? They're finally no more header files. You code in the header files? No, that's hardcore. <laughs> tin spin. Oh, tin spin. That's one solution. Okay. Like how only one of the crates is one. That's a weird thing in the Rust. Um, I think people are just hesitant to say that their stuff is that their stuff has a stable API. That's what 1.0 really means in Rust, is that you promise not to change your API to break previous versions, and that can be quite a promise to keep. So a lot of them are like, "Well, wait, 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 wait. I can't can't freeze my API yet. We're not we're not sure. We're not done." So they'll leave it at zero dot, and that's like saying, "Eh." We might change our API, so eh, we're not going to commit to a 1.0. <laughs> you can break between 1.x by Semver. Yeah, but um, it's sort of a, this is sort of a promise that you're going to stabilize. You're not going to change a whole lot of things. You might add new things, but you're not going to change the old things. Um, anyway, I, uh, I'm missing a lot of chat. Sorry if I missed your message. 
I'm not used to having a lot of people watching me. It's been a while. Did you figure out the RAM versus flash execution yet? I did. So I found a bug in the board support package for the, what was it exactly? I guess you could say it's the Cortex M. Um, one of these two crates has a bug in it where, uh, let's go to my flash function. Um, when you are going to erase a section of flash, you don't want to be running out of it. So there's this particular procedure that the Raspberry Pi RP2040 processors um, data sheet says. It says, first, um, do this dance. And this takes it out of the mode where it's executing um, in place. That's what XIP stands for. So you're no longer executing, you're no longer able to execute directly from flash. So this function has to actually be located in RAM. And I do that by putting it in a special section prefixed with dot data, which through the magic of the linker scripts, makes sure that this is loaded in the RAM and not the flash. And if you're, if you're going to ask me, how is that possible? Because RAM is uh, erased when you turn the device off. So when you turn it on, it's all going to be garbage. My answer to that is technically, the code for this is put in flash but then the first one of the first things a bootloader does is copy parts of flash to ram that are um between certain um um uh what 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 do you call it certain a certain subset of the flash is marked as these are the things that need to be copied into ram so um by the time the bootloader is done and we're running we can be confident that, that even though this was loaded from Flash, the co we're running out of a copy of it from, from RAM. Anyway, this dance disconnects us from Flash uh, execution and allows us to erase and program sectors from it. And then um, the flush and then this entering um, execute in place again allows us to go back to Flash. Um, the bug I found is that these functions, I didn't write them, they're provided by the boot ROM. So it's a completely ROM so you can't replace it you can't uh, it's not a flash it's like burned into the chip um, to find the pointers to these functions you have to go through a little dance where there's a fixed memory location which is um, if you jump to it it's a lookup helper function it's called ROM table lookup and you pass it a two byte sequence to say hey I want this function so IF stands for internal flash and um, you call that, and when it returns, it gives you the pointer to that function. Um, I had to hand code this because what was provided by the Cortex-M library was they had some Rust macros which did this in, in a lazy initialization approach where all of it was in Flash. And so let's say you're going to call program. Um, it would go into, it would try to call a function in Flash, which is a big problem because we disconnected from execute in place, so you can't do that anymore. So yeah, the way I fixed it, actually there's two things I had to do. I had to hand code these, so um, this is that, and I had to mark it to always inline it. That's the important thing. If I don't mark it as always inline, then I either have to also put it into the data section or it's it might end up at Flash. Actually, now that it occurred to me, I could, I could have put that that in. I could have put the ROM table lookup in 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 SRAM too. Anyway, um, that took me hours because I'm like, I was, I'm like, do I have this call sequence right or wrong? And I just couldn't figure out until I did did the disassembly and I saw that it was jumping back into flash. I'm like, what the heck? Don't do that. <laughs> just skip all of chat. Yeah, that's what ends up happening. I end up seeing the last people that um, chat. So what uses RAM by default? Very little. So if I were to, um, what is it? Cargo plus nightly. I'm gonna regret not making a batch file for this. Um, size, release. It'll actually tell me how much is in data. So we have actually zero bytes in data, but we have three in the BSS section, which is in RAM, but it's the um, zero initialized section of RAM. So um, this isn't counting the code that's targeted to be loaded into RAM, I think. Uh, that's part of the text segment. So yeah, I essentially have no global variables anymore. I have a few, and these are um, things like 
the root object that represents the heap. Um, this guy around here somewhere. Where did I put it? This guy. So this variable called our uh, static static allocator, right? Which is of type our heap. That's one of the, or that's four of the bytes out of BSS. Um, so that's what the linker knows. What's in what's what it's supposed to load in RAM. Um, I have reserved part of RAM myself for a heap. Oh, this is bad. I can't put it there. Why did I decide to put it there? That's going to collide with some of my data. I can't do that. Um, how did this ever work then? <laughs> Let's fix that. You, you didn't see that. You didn't see it. That's where it should have been. That's where it was all along. You didn't see anything. Traits plus modules is classes plus headers. Sort of. Although headers... Can be thought of as modules if it's clean, but not necessarily true, right? You could have really unclean headers that don't map very well to modules at all. You can do really exotic things with headers. Okay, I think I I think I caught all the major things. Um, I don't know. So the problem with this original address I had is I'm pretty sure the linker's placing some of the BSS there. Um, but yeah. I'll get back to... I'll fix this later. Uh, this... Maybe that is why it's crashing, actually. I could try that really, really quick. Build that guy. Since, since I don't have my own loader, I have to use um, the one that's built into this thing. So I hold down the boot loader and press ba reset. Do you hear the bada flash? Bada ba again. And now it's rebooted with the new program. And yeah, sometimes there's a lag before it connects. And while it does that, I guess I'll just look into the next thing. Um, where is it? Keyboard? I'm trying to find a bug here where we crash sometime after going into... Oh, right. I was fixing that when the raid happened. It was that um, we didn't have this minimum here. So I think it was looping forever. Yeah. I th well, let's try it now. Um, there we go. So let's control C, please. There we go. So let's try program again. Okay. It didn't crash. That's good. So maybe that was it. So let me comment in uh, the other stuff here. Ah, that, that lag. I should fix the, the, I can't hit control C while it's connecting. That's another bug I have here. Anyway, um, this stuff, let's put this back in. I can kill the process with process explorer. Only I stopped process. Ex no, it's there. Die, beep, beep. process, die. All right, run again. No, it crashed it. <laughs> okay. But, uh... So I'm looking for something later in my state machine that's causing it to crash. So let's say that we do give it four bytes. It gets a program size. Consumed will be uh, the whole input length. Oh, that's wrong, isn't it? Wait, this is, yeah, this is wrong. Um, it should just be equal to that, I think. Yeah, it would have been, the number would be too high and it would panic. OOP call syntax helps with code discovery. Dot autocomplete, but comes with organizational hazard. Rust traits fixes that? Well, I tend to think that whenever something fixes something, it breaks something else, or there's always a trade off, right?
Some and some people's GitHubs are empty because they're not allowed to post open source code. Tin spin. My GitHub is only not empty because up until I got my current job, I was I I could do open source. Now I can't, so you're not going to see any updates there. How are you planning on making the hot load? So I'm going to first program sectors into unused areas of Flash, and then when it's received all of the sectors, then it's going to go permanently, well, semi-permanently, into the RAM, and then just um, copy from Flash to RAM to, to the real location in Flash in, in, the, in a loop. And then when it's done, it'll reboot. Let me review this again. So when we're in the state of receiving the program size, and we have a certain number of bytes, then we kind of want to get the minimum of however many we ha have new bytes or four minus what we need or the, four minus what we have is what we need right whichever is smaller and then we'll take that in and then if we got four bytes then we know the program size and we'll update this this was where the bug was before it was doing an add instead of an equal go to the next state the next state it is Right, again, a minimum of what we're, get, what we're getting and what we need. And we're advancing the offset by that much. And once we received all of it, the program is complete. So I don't actually have the flash erasing and programming steps in here yet, but I'll add them once. I want it to go through the motions. And um, if it succeeds, then we'll actually add the real flash programming in here. This is how we reboot, by the way. Uh, it's really kind of sad we set up a watchdog and then we don't feed it <laughs> so after one microsecond the watchdog fires and reboots us and it's not my idea the data sheet told me to do that so it's not like i hate dogs um the data sheet told me to do it uh, i want to build this one make sure we have the latest program in here where's that button i can't i'm feeling for the button there it is <laughs> This is another reason I want my own programmer. I don't have to hit those buttons. Okay. Next attempt. Here we go. Oh, I think it worked. It auto-rebooted. Okay. To make sure I, that it's working, how about we not reboot at the end? Because <laughs> what happens if we reboot at the end, uh, we lose the connection before the FIFO, the, the, the ring buffer flushed out so we don't actually get all of the output but if i tell it if i comment out the rebooting part like that and instead maybe we just go back to the normal state then we can actually see it working okay so that means we only had really had two bad bugs and we fixed both of them but uh but uh Okay, control C and then run again. Look at that. Now programming. Program is this number of bytes. Programming complete. So now that we're back in the normal state, I can repeat the process. Yep. Look at that. It just works. Cool. Cool, you did an engine? A console game, you did console game dev in PS1 to PS3? That's cool. Can you tr try to just run everything in RAM? Um, it'll be possible for a while until I run out of it. So I, I don't know if this will happen, but um, my program right now is like 55 kilobytes. And I only um, have 256 kilobytes of RAM, and I want some for uh, heap, and we need some for the stack. And it's just too tempting to use the flash. Um, but yeah, we could just decide, hey, on boot, just let's just move everything to RAM and then run from there. Um, then I could program and um, and still run 
the USB and be sending feedback while programming. I wouldn't have to worry about it, but... The flash will wear down. Actually, that's one of the things I wanted to look up. Let's do it now. I want to see how many cycles, erase program cycles I can get out of this. So it's the uh, RP... No, it's the KB2040 flash... See what kind of flash it uses. Flash. It uses an eight megabyte QSPI flash. Um, should just look up a typical one. See, they one problem with this Adafruit board. They don't. I don't know the exact chip they used. Let's just look at a typical eight megabyte. Um. Spy flash. Wow, that's really random. <laughs> Never mind. Um, am I about to look at a data sheet? Why is it so slow? Okay, there we go. Um, well, that's just if it's in stock or not. Okay, here's a data sheet for a flat. Looks looks like a flash part. Yeah, a, an eight megabyte. Spy flash memory, right? So usually in these specs, they'll say um, what, how many cycles you can do. A hundred thousand. So I can reprogram my keyboard a hundred thousand times before I might expect some problem. A regular variable allocation do it? No. A variable allocation in RAM, that's not in the flash. So we only need to cycle the flash when we reprogram. Right now, as a test, I'm doing, I'm, I'm actually cycling one sector every time we reboot, but I think it's only, I've only rebooted like a couple hundred times. So I have like 99,000 more times I could do it, and... So I'm not too worried about wearing down the flash because I'm not, realistically, this is a throwaway board. I have two more for the real keyboard and um, I'm not going to program that many times. I'll probably only reprogram my keyboard ever, like maybe a couple dozen times. So I'm not too worried about it. It is, it is good to look that stuff up. You don't understand how the flash versus RAM separation works? Code execution? Oh, yeah, yeah. That is easier to explain. Um, I have in my notes the one of the data sheets um RP2040 data sheet explains it really well I think. So when they talk about the bus fabric I think yeah. So between the microprocessor cores which we of which we have two of them and the actual memories we have um I think it stands for ARM host bus, AHB bus. Anybody remember what AHB stands for? It's a bus that st stands between the CPU and the memories. So these are, you can think of them as discrete separate chips, right? There's the boot ROM, there's SRAM, and then there's a um, the e execute in place block. And that actually, the execute in place goes to a serial port, which goes to the flash, right? How much RAM am I using? Uh, probably about um, just the 64 kilobytes I'm using for my heap. I don't know how much of my stack I'm using. Maybe a couple thousand bytes. I'm not using nearly uh, two, 256K that I have. So let me let me get the, through to the um, explanation. So because these are different discrete chips, they have different chip selects. So um, when you add access in a memory address it goes through this bus and it goes to a different chip based off of parts of the address so the the um the main the the, the usual way to do it is probably explained a little bit in here they get a, a list of memory how the memory is decoded memory map right here it is so how come it's scroll to the right so if you if you look at at the different addresses for a boot the boot ROM the execute in place which is the flash, the SRAM which is the static RAM right the what goes away when you remove power, and then the built-in peripherals that's actually hardware registers that are memory mapped, the difference is the high bits of the address. So think about it like 
of the, all the bits of the address, some of them go to the memory chip, but others go to chip selects. So these um, these three bits, right? The one, the two, and the four are really chip selects. One goes to the module that does the serial port to the flash. Um, then the next bit is the one that selects the, the RAM. And then the, the next bit above there selects the internal uh, peripheral um, stuff. And then the rest of the address bits go to all, all of those. And only when the chip select for the SRAM, for example, only when that chip select is enabled does the SRAM actually do anything about the memory access. Um, think of all of these different things are simultaneously seeing the address, but the only one that actually listens to the, to the access is the one whose chip select matches. So hopefully that makes a bit, a bit more sense. Usually these things have like a nice graphical display of the memory map, but I don't see it in this one. Uh, yeah, this one doesn't have a nice one. Yeah, a lot of data sheets will, will have a graphical layout and they'll say, well, the, the flash is over here and then there's the RAM and then there's the peripherals over here. And it's just a graphical representation of those upper address bits being selecting different banks of things. How do you point to that address? What's the method called? Um, it's pointers. So when you make a pointer in your program and you give the pointer a, a literal value like 1 million, then that is the address that you'll access when you do reference the pointer. So I do that in a few places here. Uh, let me sh see if I can find one. Yeah, see, um, there's um, a particular address in Flash that I wanted to increment every time I boot. So what I do is I define that to be, here's the base address of Flash from the data sheet. You might, you might remember a few minutes ago it was saying the 1 million address is the start of Flash. And then, like I said, okay, I don't want to overwrite where my program is sitting, which is right at the beginning there. So I'll go, um, I think I said like a megabyte in. That's one megabyte, right? So I'll go one megabyte in, and that's where I'll put this counter, right? So that that the address is that flash base plus that offset in. And then that address is literally a 32-bit integer. And then we say type cast that address to be a pointer, and then dereference that pointer. That's how we load from that address. And then to write back to it, it's a little bit more complicated because... I have to go through the Flash programmer, right? You can't just write to that memory address. It does nothing. So I actually put the value I want to write back into Flash into this array of data, and then I pass that array when I uh, call the Flash program. So it's going to then transfer that bucket of 256 bytes and, and burn it into the Flash. What's the CS? Oh, this is a little trick to run this code with interrupts disabled. Um, if we go into this free thing, it says first disable interrupts, then run our function, then if interrupts were active before, enable interrupts. The syntax here is this is a closure or a function object. Other languages have similar syntax, but that the bars signal that, and what's in the bars are the function arguments, and what's in the brace is actually the code. There's this CS argument, which is this critical section, and that's because it's a convention that um, some of the um, some of the libraries that are used with embedded Rust um, want you to pass a critical section object in order to, to kind of like remind you that hey, you better have interrupts locked. You better be in a critical section. In other words, when you execute me. I'm not using it, so I put an underscore in front. If I don't do that, Rush is going to say, uh, with a warning, saying, hey, you never used the critical section, so put an underscore in it if you want to say that you never use it. You know, this is an unused variable. But yeah, essentially, just think, just think of this as run this code with interrupts blocked. The reason that I don't want interrupts to happen should, I hope is obvious. If we're in the middle of programming flash and an interrupt happens, the interrupt um, vector might cause the CPU to branch back into flash and then it's going to crash. <laughs> I think I'm staying on proper MMU until microcontrollers have enough SRAM to put code and allocators in RAM. You can do a lot with 256K, my friend. This is four times more RAM than I had on my first computer. <laughs> 
Okay, um... I should probably check my code in because I got all the bugs fixed and we're going through all the motions and we can actually do some flash programming now. I do have some warning. Oh, right. We're not rebooting. Um, let's put that back in. So don't go back to normal. Actually reboot at the end of flash programming. I want to check this code in. Oh, right. That's a separate fix. I want that. So git commit um, move the heap out of the way of our globals that i don't i don't have no idea how that ever worked because i'm pretty sure that would have stomped all over my global variables but i'm not going to think about it too hard okay yeah this was the major refactoring i did so that's what we're going to say in the checking comment get the commit uh refactoring Uh, the main thing was I moved a bunch of code out of um, pole USB, right? So pole USB is a much smaller function now, which calls process serial input. So that's what we're going to say. So extract process serial input function. And I did more than that, right? Within that code. Right, I moved the state machine into the type of the state to make it easier, yeah. So how am I going to say that? Uh, move state machine processing in uh, to be a method of the state type which made it a lot more clean uh, what is the underscore it's just a separator so that um, you can read it better the lint that comes with rust helps you out with that so if I were to remove that bar the linting that it does it's gonna put a yellow squiggly under that uh, eventually maybe um, is it not restarted? Hold on, I might have to kick it. It's supposed to warn me that that is hard to read. <laughs> Commodore 64 is the best 16-bit address device. You even prefer it to this 24-bit Amiga? Old times. Hey there, Ramy. How are you doing? Hope you're feeling better today. Okay, I'm... I'm that's weird. We should have gotten a, a warning about this being hard to read. Okay, usually you get a warning saying it's hard to read, put underscores. They're kind of like commas when you write out the number. Hey there, Clayman. Okay, I have to ask this. Raimi and Clayman, are you the same person? Because you tend to come into the channel at the same time. <laughs> I think I'm just going to say that that is all of the work, so push that. Oh no, Raimi. You can't answer that. Well, okay, possible Clayman Raimi, but yeah, I hope that you get the pain under control. That sucks. Master Agent Miyazaki, how are you today? Tonight, this morning, this evening. Um, I have worked for the last three and a half hours, but I think I've got my keyboard stuff relatively clean, although the, fun the uh, file is over 400 lines. I think this is good enough. So I, and so now I actually want to do the actual flash programming. And we're going to do it in four kilobyte sectors. So that means when we get to this thing, we're actually we're going to want to hold on to that memory. Uh, here, the current sector. So we're going to want that. Okay, and then instead of consuming the rest of the input, I actually want to put it into the current sector. Yeah, so... Current sector is going to be... That slice into a vector, right? So this would be input... Well, the slice of input from consumed on 
and then into or as vec is that the right name to vec I love the uh, pop-ups it's probably gonna tell me I don't need to borrow there we go so we're going to take the rest of the input and we're going to say that that's what we have so far for the current sector go to the receiving program state when we're in when we are in that state well this offsets wrong also right yeah this is wrong this should be zero now yeah i can just say zero because we're in the first sector at this point, right? So when we're in this state, I don't want to go up to receiving program size. I want to go up to a sector size. Um, sector size. Which is, right now it's going to be 4 kilobytes because I like that number. So traditional page size, right? U32 equals 4096. So Ramey, I hope they gave you the right things to control the swelling, because that's what that's where the pain comes from. The more swelling, the more pain. Wish it would be as cool as a legendary email. Has everyone noticed the nice badge that Ramey has? You should mouse over it and see. See, Ramey is an artist. A true artist. Do you have a C64? I started with an Apple II. I don't have it anymore, because it's a, it, my dad has it now. <laughs> Because it was really his computer all along. The oldest computer I think I have right now is the calculator from college. Which is a... I can't remember now. <laughs> hey there, Smack in the Box. How are you today? Been running on emulators on Pi. Just still hunting original hardware. So I have a, a hard, um, Raspberry Pi... Two, actually, I have an original Raspberry Pi B, I think it is, uh, a two, a couple threes, a couple zeros, and now I have the RP2040 microcontrollers. Does my dad use the Apple II? Of course he does. He loves it. It's, it's a miracle it still runs. It, it, the original floppy disks from the 80s still load. These days, if I wanted to play it, I would just run it on an emulator. Yeah, um, he likes to play Apple Trek. <laughs> it's like Star Trek, but for the Apple. Got to get an RP R R Raspberry Pi 4 with the uh, built-in Bluetooth and all that. Yeah. Okay, so if we're reading a sector at a time... Uh, oh, wait... What about the last sector? Yeah, let's let's have um let's have like a current sector size. That's going to be the minimum of a sector size. And then um the size minus offset. And then, then I substitute that there. Because if, it's because the last sector, we're not going to fill it up most of the time. So we don't want to advance this, actually. It's, um, it should be, we should change this to be if. Well, I got to move it into receiving program, right? Receiving program dot uh, current sector right that's got to have um extend um input dot iter dot take consumed right and then i don't want to do that yet 
I want to say if receiving program size or length equals the uh, current sector size, then we want to do a programming cycle. So let's comment that out to do program oh, program a sector here. And then for now, um, after we program, we would ex we would advance the offset, but by the current sector size, not by consumed. What's the error here? Oh, yeah, um, actually, that goes th there. Oh, this should be uh, current sector. Good night, Mac in the box. Wait, what are we talking about, Lux? Did I miss something? I'm trying, I'm, le I'm reading your chat history and I don't understand most of what you're saying. All right. I'm not going to worry about it too much. So this should be as you size, right? Okay, so we sh we do need to have an else here. The comment for this would be um, set um, advance to the next sector. If we reach the end, move the program into place and reboot. can't spell place and reboot um, I didn't quit from Qualcomm they um, had a mass layoff and I was caught up in that and um, that's about when I started streaming because I had lots of free time <laughs> yeah I still um... Actually, I don't really. I was about to say I still keep in touch with people from Qualcomm, but I don't really. I have no idea how they're doing. Hopefully they're still doing well. I know the group I was in um, is not really there anymore. Where can, where can I say where I work now? I'm not supposed to. Because I'm not supposed to um, have any... The stream's not supposed to have anything to do with my job. You can just... Rest assured that I have uh, happily employed. <laughs> some people in some people in chat know, but yeah, I don't really want it to be talked about too much. the The main worry is that um, it's supposed to be completely separate from work, and if if there is some crossover, and then that they might ask me to stop. So we don't want that, right? Okay. Um, if we're not at the end, uh, we would go into receiving program with an empty program, right? Actually, no. We want to advance at this point. Um, receiving program. Fill in the details. Size we have um, from here. Oh, wait. I have it marked as mute. Can I just update it? Oh, yeah. Why don't I just do that? <laughs> That's easier. That's what I had here. I'm just being dumb, I guess. Right, but before we do that, we want I want to advance the offset. Offset plus equal 
current sector size. Wait a minute, I did that up here. What am I doing? I don't need to do that. I just need to clear the um, current sector. Clear. Clear. Yes. So I should, again, dry run this to make sure it does what I want. And so that means I do kind of want this to go back to normal after saying programming complete. And test this, right? Bada. Flash. Bada. Bada. Here we go. Oh, no, I broke it. <laughs> Is there a keyboard shortcut for opening that context action menu? I, I missed what the context action menu was, but probably there's keyboard shortcuts for everything. A lot of times though, I get lazy and I just don't do them. But, uh... I'll need to fix whatever bug I just put in here. What did I do? Okay. It's probably in this receiving program state, so let me just review it. This is 4096. Hey Lux, I don't know who you're talking to or what about, but it doesn't seem to have much to do with my stream, so... Um, are you in the right stream? Light bulb menu for VS Code. Oh, um, when there's a bug like um, that, uh, control dot. I think. Oh, this, yeah, it's control dot. Control period. So the minimum of 4096 or the rest of the program. So the first sector, it's going to be 4096. And it's going to take wherever the smaller of however many bytes we have. Oh, this is wrong. It should just, this, okay, this is, this is the problem. It should be receiving program dot um, current sector dot length. U32 is all around, right? Little bit of tight mismatch, but that's okay. I think we will see layoffs at your workplace soon. Oh, that sucks. Because of the um, economic downturns in places. Okay, that was a bug. So it's supposed to take the sector size total and how much we already have received. That's how much we need. And then extend it to take that much. And if its length is now the sector size we can program, we'll advance the offset. If we reach the end of the program, we're done. Otherwise, we clear the current sector and go back to receiving the program. Okay, let's try this one. Bada. Bada. Okay, that's interesting. So I need to print more because it should have said programming complete, but it didn't, and it also didn't crash, right? So we need to print more. So how about, how about whenever we get to a sector, we'll just print out that we pro we're going to program something. Yeah, let's do that. Pro 
programming sector colon zero eight x and that's going to be the offset yeah, let's put the size in there to make sure that that logic's correct also that's going to be current sector size yeah let's do that It's almost midnight. I don't know if I'll get this done tonight. Might have to continue this on Friday. But, uh... Okay, so it got pretty far, but then it kind of stalled out at... Okay, what? what's that in hex? <laughs> Cal calculator, please. What is 56316 in hex? DBCF. Okay, so it's in the it's the last sector it's stalled on. Okay. So maybe I have a miscalculation for the last sector. Uh okay, maybe. Let's so go go look. So if we're in the last sector, then this is gonna be smaller than that. It should still get to the end. I kind of want to peek at the length of the current sector if, like, it takes too long. Gonna have a, be viewing a house. I can't. I, I can't remember which. Was it you, Ramy, or was it Endurin who got a house? <laughs> Can't remember now. You got a house already? Oh, sorry. Are you upgrading? Or are you just viewing it to like see? Hmm, my house is so much better. <laughs> Not sure what to do here. How about we go back to pole USB? Where's pole USB? Pole USB. I could like print out the um yeah I could say like if we're in the programming state every second print out how much we receive maybe I I just I just had a thought what if we're cutting off extra bytes by accident here or here oh that's the problem we're we are cutting it off right here okay i can't we can't do that um i have to remove that yeah <laughs> oops in fact, we don't want to do this at all. Oh, well, actually, I, I guess we could do... We, no, it'd just be better to keep it simple. Let's put this back to VecNew. We don't consume the input. We return back and we consume it on the next pass. So we just consume what we needed to um, get four bytes for the size. The re remainder goes into here. Yeah. Okay, let's try that. 
So many little bugs. Ba -da. Ba -da. Ba -da. There we go. That was it. Look at that. Last sector has a very odd number. That's a very coincidental number. All C's. C's for the win. Okay, so it's five, six, five, two, four. It's D C C C. Programming complete. So let's burn it into the flash. Actually, let, before I do that, one more um, check in. Check that in. And let me l review. So this is actually collecting the data to burn into flash, is what it's doing. What does it do when... Okay, I, sh I should have complete sentences before I speak. What does it do when we've collected all of a sector and I say to do? Oh, wait, this is bad. Um, it never gets rid of the current program. <gasps> oh, no, it does. Right here. <laughs> Yeah, we need to do that or we'll we'll blow the lid on the heap in, in no time. Okay. <laughs> cool. So I'm going to check this in. This will be collect the uh, contents of um, flash sectors to be written. That's too long, so we make something shorter. This is work in progress implementing Flash Programmer. Get to push. All right, it's past midnight. How far am I going to go? I would like to get all the way, but that's going to be ambitious. You went looking at a house once that had a cannon in the front porch? Was it an operational cannon? Raimi's actually upgrading to a castle. Hey, you know, so, you, you, these are dangerous days. You have to have some kind of defense. Okay, so we have all we need to program a flash sector here. We have an offset. We have the actual bytes. So let's do it. I have this flash experiment. I think what I'm going to do is actually have a real flash programmer here. Uh, program sector. So what will it need? Um, the the base. Well, the offset and the. Um, Data. View eight. Right, and it's essentially this part, and I could have it do the lookup stuff once and not look it up every time, but that would take more work, and this is easier. So the erase. It's always going to be 4096, right? Oh, hold on. Um, yeah, let's actually make this say um, 4096. Which I should make a constant, right? Actually, do I want to use the same constant? I think I do. I want the same constant um, sector size. Let's move that to flash and make it public. Uh, this is the size in bytes of um, what we consider a sector. Actually, it's not what we consider a sector. It's, it's actually... Um, in the data sheet. So let me verify that when we erase it, it's of that exact size. Uh, this one. 
Consulting the Book of Armaments. Flash. Is it is it here? Yeah, here we go. Flash erase. Address must be aligned to 4096 sector by sector and count must be a multiple of 4096. Okay. That answers that. This is size invites of oh, good night. Of a and it's not even a quote. It's it's um it's a sector of our flash memory. I'll just say flash because memory is a, a mix is a confusing term. Public constant sector size that and that okay so erase will be offset and so will be program uh, why did I put offset there that should be sectors well that could be data length this could be any number less than sector well no we don't we want it to be sector size right Does that also have to be a different type here? If you get the hot loading working, will you make a game for the Pico system? <laughs> I wish I could work on games. That tiny hackable dev handheld with RP2040 as its heart? Really? Oh, that's so cute. It's like a little teeny Game Boy or something. How come the image isn't loading? There it goes. Look, look how teeny tiny and cute that is. Wow. So what are they running on that? They're running an RTOS or something? Micro Python. Okay, I've heard about this. Circuit Python, yeah. So it's like a little RTOS. That's cool. I had a glitch. What glitch? I dropped 274 frames. Well, I, yeah, anyway, I was just saying it's cute. So what's this error? <sighs> yes, as you size, indeed. Why is that you size? I don't know. Anyway, um, I think this will just work. Because this will be in RAM, it'll program from RAM and then return. Okay, let's just make sure that this works then. Um, back here. Uh, we are, we're leaving the watchdog in place, right? Yeah. Back here, um, we'll just do it. So, f flash. which will import program sector. The offset we know, oh, I'm gonna add to the offset, right? So this is gonna be, um, what are we gonna call it? It's like, we can't, pr we can't write over our own program. We have to write over like a holding area. So loading area or flash. Stage. How about we call it flash staging area? Flash staging offset. Okay. 32 or size. I can't remember what I... U32. Zero X. That's one megabyte, right? Group by four? Oh, right. Let me confirm that that's a megabyte. <laughs> one 
one zero 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 zero. That's a megabyte. Okay, so that should be safe, right? And our data is our um, receiving program current sector. Oh, as slice. Hold on, I got the types wrong. Uh, is it into? Unwrap? Is that how you do that? Yes. Okay, and then what's this other error? Yeah, we need to import that. Try into. Basically, it verifies that the slice is of the correct size, or um, it will panic. <gasps> Program the sector uh, into the staging area. So the idea is we, we burn the entire program into a staging area that we're not executing from. Then when it's done, we go into an SRAM only function that um, for what each sector at a time reads it into f to RAM and then writes it to the actual location. And then when that's done, then we reboot. So that we can, should I just try that? No, no, I'm not gonna try that now. I'm gonna make sure that this actually builds and doesn't crash. But this should reprogram, this should program in, this should, pro this should burn the program in just in the wrong spot, right? Uh, flash. And then run. Nope, it crashed. <laughs> no! Well, it didn't completely kill it, so... I didn't overwrite the wrong sector or something. Um, okay, so that's the only change I did, right? So that must be what I what broke it. Yeah, okay, and then... Oh, wait, hold on. Uh, I think I might know what it is. Yeah, I didn't put it in RAM. <laughs> I need to make sure it's in RAM. That would do it. <laughs> Violate the thing I said never to do. Never program Flash from Flash. Okay. But, uh, what happened to my MMO? It, progress has stopped because um, it was an open source but, project uh, and I can't do open source right now. It's also a game and that's also problematic. Okay, here we go. <gasps> it did something. Oh. That last sector is going to be a problem, right? That last sector is going to be a problem. Uh, you got to fix that. This is hosed, though. But, uh... Okay, I think it's just another last sector issue I think we have to fill it with zeros yeah yeah it's gonna panic here in the try into okay then um, we gotta fill it up so it's just resize right current sector resize set Set lane. That's okay. I need to extend resize. I need, whoa, that was freaky. <laughs> I guess it tried to follow a link there. Uh, sector size, right?
that fill with zeros? Uh, I have to actually say what to fill it with. Fill it with zeros. As you size. All right. Almost done with first stage uh, programmer. But, uh, there we go. <gasps> it did it. Okay, cool. We're almost done. Have you written any assembly language for this project? Uh, no. I haven't needed to. I have worked with assembly language on the Pi Zero because I did that bare metal. But, um... And actually, that, I, I can take a minute to show that. Um, new window. I'm eventually going to make a YouTube series out of this. But before I worked on this RP2040, I um, played around with this um, Raspberry Pi Zero. And you, um, since it's bare metal, I had to provide the um, assembly for the reset vector. So here's what it looked like vectors. So I used Core Arch Globalism to um, just hand code the assembly for the uh, reset vector. So you, ha you have these sections and globals so that you can reference them from your linker script. But um, for the Raspberry Pi Zero, which is an ARM11, you um, the vectors are actually instructions that are executed. So you just jump straight to a trampoline that are preloaded with the symbols for, um, or preloaded with the addresses of these different um, routines. And then this assembly um, is moving the, the vectors themselves into place because they're not loaded there. And um, yeah, then we set up the stacks. So this is what ARM assembly looks like. I think that's all the assembly. I, oh, no, there's a little bit here and there. So, like, um, not for exception handlers. Yeah, for interrupts, to enable interrupts is a, a three instructions. Uh, what else? I have some assembly here in the main program. No. Oh, you're right. To set up the MMU, um, special coprocessor instructions there. Um... I tried to do as little assembly as possible, though. So, like, accessing memory map registers, I just tried to do that the way I'm doing it in um, the keyboard project. Yeah, waiting for interrupt is uh, another two instructions. And this is setting up the floating point coprocessor. Oh, I gotta answer that. Oh, I'll be right back. Yeah, midnight call from Mrs. Raimu, who's on a business trip right now. So yeah, um, that was a long excursion to show that, yeah, I, um, I have done assembly on the arm for another hobby project, but I haven't had to do any for this one. Mostly because the foundational crates that I'm basing off of, like, um, especially these ones, are, um, take care of all that, um, Boots, bootloader stuff for me and the uh, reset vectors and interrupts so um, if you go into those crates you'll see assembly but you won't see it in my code right now okay so the last step is here 
when programming is complete, well, it's not complete, and there's no point for us um, actually logging this, is there? Hold on. So that, whoops, that goes there because this is what we would do um, if we're not going to program, but now we're going to actually program it. <laughs> so um, I'm leaving that in there just in case of a catastrophe. So assuming no catastrophe, we need to run a r routine where we basically say how big the program is, and then it's just going to loop and copy it. So what do we want to call it like finalize or or um commit how about commit commit reprogram that sounds sufficiently um final right and then it needs to know the receiving program dot size and the staging offset Actually, can that, what's better, having that a parameter or having the function use that constant? I think it's better to actually have it be a parameter. Okay. We'll put that into the flash too. Um... Let's put it here, I guess. Pub function commit reprogram. So that's going to be um, offset and size. Okay. And then it's going to actually have the watch. Oh, we need to give it the watchdog because it's going to be doing this watchdog stuff. And it never returns. Well, it returns in, in its new afterlife of being another program, right? But from the, our current program's point of view, this never returns. And it's going to execute from RAM and never be inlined. Oh, and I need the watchdog. What type is that? Mutable reference to watchdog. It's kind of funny. Like at this point, it really doesn't matter what the uh, borrows are because it's about to reset. <laughs> right? Watchdog enable as underscore. Um, where is it getting microseconds from, anyway? Duration extensions. This. We need that. Over here. Okay. then this doesn't happen anymore. Okay. 